It's a Saturday in September, and in Columbus, that means Buckeye football. The fans gather early here. There is a lot of talk to talk about, but today maybe just a little bit different at the shoe. Another Ohio team is in-house, a team that leads the nation in offense and has the U-word on its mind. It's two undefeated teams doing battle, and it's coming up next. Presents national champion Ohio State football on ESPN Plus. More than 100,000 on hand at Ohio Stadium to watch two state teams with perfect records battle it out in the Buckeyes and Bowling Green. Hello, everybody, along with J.C. Pearson. I'm Craig Kishon. Nice to have you with us here this afternoon. Can't really call it a rivalry just yet between these two teams, but a significant game nonetheless. Ohio State trying to keep their perfect string on the line. 17 straight wins overall, while Bowling Green comes in here with perhaps their best team ever. We talk about Ohio State. So many close games with so many key plays in their winning streak. And most of those key plays, Craig, have been made by the defense. Two weeks ago, Will Allen returns this interception 100 yards against San Diego State. They win the game, the game by three points. Last week against North Carolina State, A.J. Hawk and Will Allen come up with the big stop on the one-foot line, and they beat North Carolina State in triple overtime. It's fair to say, Craig, so far this year, this defense has carried this team. Look at the close calls during the streak over the last two years. Nine wins by less than a touchdown and three overtime victories, including last week. Significant storyline today. Quarterback Craig Krenzel won't play with a strained elbow, hasn't practiced all week. It's up to senior Scott McMullen getting only his second career start. And the big question is, how is he going to react? No one really knows because he hasn't had a lot of snaps. And with an offense that's already been struggling, Craig, this guy's got to be feeling a lot of pressure. And while that Ohio State offense remains in flux, no question about Bowling Green's offense. They are number one in the nation coming in to today's game. And you see their steady climb over the years since the 2000 season, averaging more than 575 yards of offense, led by Josh Harris. And if they have any chance of winning this game today, Josh Harris has to have his A game, not only throwing the football, but today they want and need him to make big plays running the ball. And as coach Greg Brandon is with the third member of our team, Anne Marie Anderson. Coach, a lot of people might be looking at this matchup a little differently after your win against Purdue a couple of weeks ago. What does a victory like that do for your team in terms of confidence? Well, obviously, it's a great boost for our confidence. Uh, we played well at Purdue and were fortunate enough to make one more play than they did and uh, uh, won the football game. So, uh, you know, bringing that in, that momentum into Ohio State's really important. Thanks, Coach. We'll catch up with you later. Guys? It's been Krenzel's club for the last 19 games. Now Scott McMullen must take over. Ohio State. Ohio State Bowling Green State next. Back at Ohio Stadium, Bowling Green State with a short bus ride to Columbus, ready for the Buckeyes this afternoon. A busy day in the Big Ten. Let's go around the conference. The Big Ten has shown that they're not invincible, but still remain a heavy favorite in the ESPN USA Today Top 25 poll. And it's another big week for the conference as number five Michigan leaves the comforts of Ann Arbor for the first time this season and traveling to Eugene to take on the 22nd ranked Oregon Ducks. Both teams unbeaten. Oregon tops the Pac-10 with 198 rushing yards a game, but the Wolverines may be the hottest team of the nation. And why not? The Mays and Blue are led by running back Chris Perry, who's tied for first to the nation in scoring and also tops the country in rushing yards in only three games for 549. In another battle of the rankings and unbeatens, the Big Ten once again takes on the Pac-10 with number 16, Arizona State, and number 14, Iowa meet in Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes have a new career leading scorer. Kicker Nate Kading now has 291 career points and continues to be a factor in the Hawks' offense. Both 23rd ranked Notre Dame and Michigan State are coming off tough losses this past weekend. The Spartans may have to beat the Irish without the help of quarterback and Big Ten passing leader Jeff Smoker. Finally, Minnesota just broke into the top 25 to remain undefeated at 3-0. The Golden Gophers have had the luck, but will be tested in their final non-conference game against Louisiana Lafayette. Let's look at the rest of the action around the Big Ten today. 
California visits Illinois. Arizona is at Purdue. Wisconsin hopes to bounce back against UNC. Penn State hopes to break even against Kent State. Duke hosts Northwestern, and Kentucky is at Indiana. Josh Harris returns home to the Columbus area, ready to take on the Buckeyes, OSU, and Bowling Green. The kickoff is coming up next. Back at Ohio Stadium on a beautiful afternoon for football. Bowling Green and Ohio State are ready to do battle. Let's take a look at the Napa keys to the game. JC, what do you think? Well, for Bowling Green, Josh Harris, like we said in the open, has got to play his A game. And they're going to have to have big plays from everyone on the offensive side and the defensive side, especially early in the game to give their team confidence. For Ohio State, they've got a big size advantage. They've got to control the line of scrimmage. And the big thing for them, they can't turn the ball over. As I mentioned, it is beautiful here, as you can see. Temperature in the upper 50s at this point, and I'm sure the temperatures will climb up a bit, but we are in football weather right now on a sunny day. Let's get a final word before kickoff from Anne-Marie Anderson on the sideline. Guys, as you mentioned, Bowling Green's quarterback, Josh Harris, grew up in the Columbus area. He may be coming in here feeling like he has something to prove. He says he was only lightly recruited by Ohio State and, in fact, did not receive a single scholarship offer from any Big Ten school because nobody had enough confidence in him at quarterback. Guys? Well, he told us last night it's uh, good to be back and wasn't sure if he wanted to, to go to school at Ohio State anyway. He wanted to get out of town. He's able to accomplish that and really build a fine career. As we take a look at Jim Tressel, the Ohio State head coach. It's been an interesting run this uh, first three weeks. Maurice Claret, of course, suspended for the year, and then Craig Krenzel now out of action this week. So, again, trying to get that offense in sync, but yet they remain unbeaten. And we are just about ready to kick this uh, football game off. Bowling Green State will receive, and they have brought little over 8,000 fans to this game. At least tickets sold prior to arriving last night. So you'll see some orange and white among the red and white here at Ohio Stadium, but you will definitely see more than 100,000 fans here waiting for two 3-0 teams to battle. Mike Nugent will do the kicking for Ohio State. And for Bowling Green, Brandon Jones and Terrell Mayberry are back deep to take this kick. Only the third meeting ever between these two clubs, and we are underway. A short kick, and Jones has it. And he is brought down just over the 15-yard line. That tackle made by Bobby Carpenter. As we see Josh Harris come out now, for Bowling Green. You see his season numbers. Only played a little over a quarter last week in their big victory over Liberty. Again, putting up more than 60 points on the board, winning 62 to 3. Harris over center. As this game progresses, you will see they will use a no huddle. Pass over to Cole Magner. He's got it, and a nice pickup on first down. A.J. Hawk makes the tackle. Let's take a look at our marathon starting lineups. First, the Bowling Green backs and receivers, Magner. He is the go-to guy, one of the tremendous athletes in the MAC conference. On that offensive line, Scott Murkowski anchors it, a Lombardi Award candidate from Bowling Green. Good pickup on first down, second down, and two. This time the running game goes to work for Bowling Green. Nate Sally makes the tackle as we take a look at Ohio State's defensive starters, Darian Scott, one of three Lombardi Award candidates. A.J. Hawk leads the team with 20 tackles, and Chris Gamble all everything for Ohio State playing a lot of defense in the first three games may see him a little bit on offense more today we will see first down to 10 again Bowling Green moving the football Magner makes the uh, reception and takes it up near the 46 yard line 
Hawk again the tackle, and they'll keep that defense busy today. They will, and they they never go into the huddle. They're always at the line of scrimmage, Craig, and that way they can dictate the tempo and the substitutions by Ohio State. So they really want to come out and control the tempo of this ball game. We say the no huddle, they'll just meet right at the line of scrimmage and break it from there. Harris fakes the handoff. Goes left. Has an open receiver, but overshoots Charles Sharon. Had him open. You talk about the jitters of coming into a stadium of this size. Again, they beat Purdue a couple of weeks ago. And they're not showing any jitters. This spread offense is designed to make it a man-to-man -man football game. And you can see on the outside, Charles Sharon runs that stutter and go, and he's wide open. The ball's just a little overthrown, but that's what they want. This spread offense is going to spread this defense out, make those guys play in space. Third down and one in the opening drive from their own 46. Harris has this one deflected away. It's A.J. Hawk again on the deflection, and it is fourth down and one, a punting situation for Bowling Green. A.J. Hawk, one of their big playmakers on defense, and this that's what they're going to have to do. They're not going to get to Harris very much because they're going to be throwing the ball quick. The key is to get their hands up at the line of scrimmage, and Hawk did a good job of knocking that ball down. So Nate Fry comes in to punt for the Falcons. Chris Gamble will return this punt. It's a low liner. Picks it up at his 20. Tries to turn the corner. Not a whole lot of running room before he's finally pushed out of bounds at the 24-yard line, and that's where the Buckeyes will take over on their first offensive series. We mentioned Craig Krenzel out, so it's up to Scott McMullen now. Made his last start. As you see, Krenzel, two years ago, that was for one half against Illinois, and that's where Krenzel's streak of starting took over. As McMullen comes out, He's attempted only one pass so far this season in limited playing action, only attempted four passes a year ago. He's a senior, knows the system, but it's a different situation to start in a big game. Practice in a game is completely different. And the handoff goes to Ross, and they want to get that running game going. That's where they go to on the first play. Take a look at the backs and receivers. Michael Jenkins, the uh, leading receiver, of course, for Ohio State. Two touchdowns last week in that victory over North Carolina State. On that offensive line, Nick Mangold getting his second career start. Pick up a four on the run from Ross. Second down and six. Mullen back to pass. Finds his receiver in Michael Jenkins. And it looks like a first down for Ohio State. Take a look at that Bowling Green defense right now. Mitchell Crossley and Devon Parks. Two great young players. Mitch Hewitt, three fumble recoveries in the last two games. And Keon Newsom, leading tackler for this Bowling Green team. Good young balance club from Upperclassmen to freshmen and sophomores for Bowling Green. A lot playing and a lot performing. First down and 10 for the Buckeyes at their own 35. Lost the fake. Reverse around this time. Drew Carter with the football. Picks up a first down as he crosses the 50 into Bowling Green territory. Jansen Patton makes the tackle for the Falcons. Drew Carter's their fastest player. He's in the four threes. They're trying to find ways to get him the football. They just run the reverse to him, and you can see how fast he is around the corner. That's going to really help the inside running game also. They can't just focus inside with that reverse outside with the speed to Carter. Carter, a nice pickup for the first down at the 49 of the Falcons. This time Ross takes it, trying to find some running room, maybe a couple of yards. Bowling Green, stingy on that run defense, only giving up about 97 yards rushing a contest. Faller, the tackle. That whole front four for Bowling Green, freshmen and sophomores. 
They're just young guys. They're not real big, so they're concerned about the physical play. Ohio State has had trouble running the football. They've had missed assignments and just one thing after another. Today, they're going to emphasize the running game and try to get that straightened out. Pick up of three, second down and seven. Mullen, quick pass over the middle. Finds his tight end, Ryan Hamby. Plenty of running room finally brought down as he rumbles down to the 25-yard line. Patton again on the stop for Bowling Green, along with Brian Gardner. Great read by McMullen that Bowling Green blitzes those inside linebackers, and Hamby just is on a hot route, and there's nobody in the middle of the field, and McMullen just puts it right there. Great recognition by McMullen of seeing the blitz, and the middle of the field is wide open. Gets it to Hamby real quick for a big game. They like their tight ends, 11 receptions between Hamby and Hartsock so far in the season. Ohio State on their opening drive. Maurice Hall in the backfield. He gets his first carry of the game, and not a whole lot of running room right there. He is wrapped up by Jason Morton. Short gain for the Buckeyes. Bowling Green, they run this zone blitz type of defense. They're always moving around. They're going to bring either one or two linebackers or a safety almost on every play. That's what gives this offensive line a lot of problems because they don't know who's coming and from where. Game of two, Hall in that backfield again for the Buckeyes. McMullen finds Jenkins. He loses the football, and Bowling Green's got it. Fighting for the extra yards, has the ball stripped, and the Falcons come up with that turnover here in the first quarter. Mitch Hewitt has the football. And that's one thing the coaches talked about last night, not turning the football over. And for Bowling Green, of course, they wanted to get the ball. See McMullen, just a quick three-step drop out to Jenkins, and then a guy just trying to do a little too much in the ball. Just squirts out right there, and Bowling Green comes up with the big stop, and you can see the ball just squirts out right there. Bowling Green, they live off of turnovers. Last year, they averaged 14 points off of turnovers and block picks, so that's how they win. Bowling Green takes over at their own 14, and the horseshoe gets a little bit louder. Harris, to his left, makes the pass. It's complete at the 19, gain of four. Cornelius McGrady on the reception. And so they're a little bit slow to mark that, but it is a completion at the 19-yard line, so it'll be second down and five. Harris has three receivers to his right. This time the handoff, nothing doing there. Thrown for a loss is P.J. Pope. Robert Reynolds breaks through the backfield. That's one thing Bowling Green can't have. All they wanted to do was contain this front seven. They didn't want to dominate. They know they're not physically strong enough to dominate them. They just want to contain them, meaning don't let those guys into the backfield and disrupt the play like we saw Robert Reynolds just do. Loss of one, third down and six. Harris rolls left. Makes the pass and it is intercepted by Ohio State. Dustin Fox has the football and he's brought down at the 30-yard line. Ohio State's defense answers picking off the pass and giving that offense great field position. And that was just not a good throw by Josh Harris. He knows that he's got to make some big plays for his team, but you've got to do it in a smart way. He's rolling out to his left and has to throw across his body, and the ball just gets away from him. You can see he's rolling to his left. He's never planted or square. He throws across his body, and the ball gets away from him and right to Dustin Fox. So Ohio State will have the ball at their own 29-yard line. Buckeyes come up with the turnover. 8.44 to go here in the first quarter. 
McMullen over center. Makes the handoff. He's in trouble. And he is going to be brought down back at his 36-yard line. And it looks like a flag comes in at the last moment. Ted Pipkow in on the sack. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. Inadvertent face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat, first out. That's a tough one when you're in there making the sack in the inadvertent face mask. And now they get a first down out of it. Well, they didn't get fooled by the by the boot action by McMullen. Like you said, Craig, just inadvertent face mask, just uh, unfortunate for Bowling Green, but they've got to stay aggressive. They, they have to be able to live with those penalties and continue to get after the quarterback if they're going to have any chance of winning this game. You saw Pitt Cow late over the last couple of weeks for Javon Burks, who's been nursing an injury to his knee. Maurice Hall gets the carry over the middle. On first and five. It's two, maybe three. Daniel Sales there to bring him down. Bowling Green, you go back to their big win at Purdue, another Big Ten opponent, and they had trouble in the first half. They were pinned deep back in their own territory. Their first drives were here, and then the turnover setting up Ohio State right here. Question is, can Ohio State capitalize? Because Purdue was able to do that and put Bowling Green in a hole. Second down and two. Pitch back this time to Hall. And it looks like he has picked up a first down. Keon Newsom there on the tackle. With McMullen in, they're going to definitely emphasize this running game. They've struggled with it all year. and Now they just run the toss outside, try to let Maurice Hall use his speed and quickness to get to the outside. Bowling Green, they do a good job playing against the run. You were talking about the Purdue game just a second ago, Craig. They held Purdue to only 95 yards rushing the whole game. So they line up and they can play. They just don't play the physical game. They try to move around and create mismatches. Adele Walsh in the backfield for the Buckeyes. He takes the pitch back. What a room to run. Cuts back inside and up near first down territory. Inside the 10 yard line down to the seven. This was just a blown play by the defense. When you see, watch the outside here, look at all the red jerseys out there. That's because Bowling Green, they shifted to the right, and, and there was an overload to Ohio State's right. They just run the toss, and you can see those guys scrambling from the inside trying to get there. They just weren't lined up correctly. That's one thing they can't have that their coaches stress. No missed assignments. Ross in the backfield. First down and goal to seven for the Buckeyes. He gets the handoff. Lunches ahead, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Sales again on the tackle for Bowling Green. Talking to Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator for Ohio State yesterday, and he said, you know, the first two weeks that offensive line did okay. Last week wasn't happy at all. It was kind of a back to basics during practice this week. They were definitely challenged this week to come out and play well and they're looking to do that and they're so big up front they should be able to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. Five receivers spread out for McMullen. Owen in the backfield makes the throw and overshoots his intended receiver Drew Carter. Quick timing play goes for not so it's going to be third and goal from the seven yard line. And they're just getting rid of the ball quick with McMullen. You see he's looking right where he's trying to throw the ball to Carter and the ball just gets away from him and you can see that's inexperienced by McMullen he eyes Carter down the entire way and then the ball gets away from him shows some some inexperience there and that's what Bowling Green has to take advantage of to try to stop the run make McMullen make some plays through the air third down and goal Ross in the backfield McMullen straight back pass to the end zone touchdown Ohio State to Drew Carter a big third down and goal pass play. McMullen to Carter and Ohio State's on the board. <laughs> Carter with his first touchdown catch of the season. Carter had a great game last week, but 
the cornerback gives him too much room. You see, the cornerback is four yards in the end zone. So all Carter does is run, runs up, turns around, and the ball's right there, and it's a touchdown. Nugent tacks on the extra point, and the Buckeyes take advantage of a Josh Harris interception, turn it into seven, and take a first quarter lead here at Ohio Stadium. Back in Columbus, Ohio State leading Bowling Green State 7 to nothing, 604 to go here first quarter. Let's take a look now at the college football rankings brought to you by Allstate. Good hands make all the difference. Number one, Oklahoma, Miami, USC, Ohio State at number four, and Michigan at five. Imagine if things stay that way in that top five bracket for those two clubs at the end of the season. That's going to be a huge game. Brandon Jones takes his kickoff, and again, not a whole lot of room to run after he crosses the 10-yard line, gets up to maybe the 13. But Bowling Green will start deep in their own territory now for their third straight offensive series. And we will take a break here at Ohio Stadium and come back midway through the first quarter. The Buckeyes own a 7-0 lead over the Falcons. Back in Columbus, number four, Ohio State leading Bowling Green State here in the first quarter, 7-0. Turnovers have been a key so far in this ballgame. And earlier, Ohio State drives all the way downfield. Michael Jenkins turns the ball over, but then Dustin Fox comes right back with the big interception, which leads to this touchdown by Carter right at the goal line. Ohio State was able to take advantage of great field position. The field position has not been good for Bowling Green. A quick pass in. Ohio State's defense making a statement there on Cornelius McGrady. Led by Dustin Fox and Brandon Mitchell. And field position is crucial for Bowling Green because if they keep starting back deep in their own territory and really limits their offensive package, they can't really run their full package because they can't risk the turnover like they just had. It's Greg Brandon, first year as head coach. Great start, 3-0, including an upset win at Purdue, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago when the Boilermakers were ranked 16th. Another quick pass, looks like a first down for the Buckeyes. This one to Charles Sharon, I should say, for the Falcons. I tell you, they better be careful with those quick three-step drops, especially on this guy's side right here, number seven, Chris Gamble. He is a fantastic cornerback, and he actually started to jump that route. If they keep running it, you can look for Chris Gamble to try to pick one of those quick stops off. It's one thing you don't want to throw too often his way, do you? Not at all. Only when you have to. First and 10, Harris. Chase down to the pocket, finds Magner. First down up near the 45-yard line for Cole Magner. Came into this game with 16 receptions for 267 yards and four scores. And Harris did a good job getting the ball to Magner, but we were just talking about Chris Gamble and how he does gamble sometimes. That time he bit on the stop, and Charles Sharon was wide open down the field, but Harris didn't have enough time to throw it to him. Bowling Green now with plenty of breathing room up near their 45-yard line, first down and 10. Harris looking straight downfield, now in trouble, fires away, and another first down, this time up to McGrady again. So he's using Cornelius McGrady, A.J. Hawk there to push him out of bounds. And that shows you the maturity of Josh Harris, and the coaches were telling us last night how much he's really matured. Instead of just pulling the ball down and running when his first option is not open, now he'll go to his, through his progression read. You see, the first guy's not open. Instead of just running, he keeps his eyes downfield, and he finds McGrady downfield for a catch. Last year, he would have pulled that down and ran. Darian Scott, the uh, injured Buckeye, slow to get off the field. Senior out of Charleston, West Virginia. So Bowling Green, another first down. They're at the Buckeye, 44. There's pass to his left. Magner's got it. Short gain down to the 40-yard line. Pick up a four. So Magner on another reception. Gamble there to bring him down. See Magner's numbers on the season. 
They just run the, the shoot screen outside, and this looks like it's just a short gain on a pass play, but it's four yards, and four yards is a winning play because if you run the ball, if you can get four yards, that's fine. This one tipped again by Will Smith across that front line for Ohio State. And if they can get those big paws on the football and do that occasionally, that's all they need to do. And I'm sure that's something that they emphasized all week in practice because you're not going to get to Josh Harris very often because he's so elusive and he throws it so quickly. You've got to get your hands up when he's throwing the ball. The deflection and incompletion makes it third and six. Harris again. First down to Charles Sharon. Bowling Green State keeps this drive alive. A couple of key third down plays. And one of the things they wanted to do is make sure they knew where Chris Gamble was because they were going to try to stay away from him. So far, it looks like it really doesn't matter to Josh Harrison and Charles Sharon. They're going to go right at Chris Gamble. Wagner. A nice game. Chris Gamble there to bring him down. You can see Gamble just playing zone coverage now, comes up and makes the tackle, but this no huddle offense, what it does, it's, it limits the substitutions by Ohio State's defense, so now they've got linebackers out in coverage, and you know they're playing zone. So one of the goals for this Bowling Green State team is to keep their offense on the field. This time, though, Harris in trouble. A swarming defense led by Marcus Green coming in from the Buckeyes to bring him down. And that's a good example, Craig. I think sometimes you can take a guy's talent away from him. They, they preach to Josh Harris so much in the offseason about staying in the pocket and throwing the football, but you've got to let him be what got him uh, to, to make him the player that he was, and that's running the ball. He could have ran that ball and easily gotten the first down, but he's got in his mind now to stay in the pocket and throw it and got sacked. Third down and one. Harris is lined up as a receiver. And P.J. Pope took the direct snap and just ran ahead for the first down. Harris was up on the far left side. And you got to go to the bag of tricks every once in a while. You definitely do, especially in a game like this where you need big plays. You're not going to just line up and knock those guys off the ball. So you've got to trick them a little bit. And Harris again goes wide left. Pope takes a direct snap. Finds some running room. Gets seven, maybe eight. Finally dragged down by Tim Anderson. So a little wrinkle to the offense. If it works once and they don't stop it, why not come back to it again? You can see just a direct snap. And now he just bounces it outside. And he's got a lot of room to run it. If it's working, Craig, stick with it until they stop it, huh? Well, occasionally, Harris will go out and catch a pass. He told us last night, you know, it's not up to me to catch the passes, though. It's up to me to throw it and run occasionally. i got to rely on my teammates, but he may get it after all before this afternoon is up. He lines up at quarterback for a moment. Now back again at receiver, top screen. Polk rolls that way. Looks like he's going to keep it. This time, the Buckeyes said, you know what? Three strikes, you're out on this one. And I guarantee you what they're doing, they're going to set up a pass off of that. Three straight runs by Pope, the, the direct snap. Now they run the, the sweep outside with Pope. Ohio State's all over it. Now you can look for them to try to set up a pass by Pope. Buggich and Sally there on the stop for the Buckeyes. Third down and four. Ball is on the eight-yard line of Ohio State. Harris stays in at the quarterback position, takes the snap, pass, touchdown! McGrady makes the reception, and Bowling Green answers. Great call by Bowling Green. They know it's man coverage. They run a pick route outside, and Dustin Fox gets caught up, and McGrady is wide open on that slant. That is a great Game plan called by Bowling Green. 
Sean Swisham in for the extra point for the Falcons. And the extra point ties this ball game up at seven apiece. Bowling Green State fans like what they have seen here at Ohio Stadium. We are locked up seven all. Back at Ohio Stadium, a 7-7 game late here in the first quarter. Bowling Green went on a tremendous scoring drive of 13 plays, 87 yards. McGrady gets the touchdown reception, and we are tied 7-all. Sarisa a short kick to the 25-yard line. And Childress. Finally brought down to the 34-yard line. Looking for some running room. Finally found some. Let's take a moment now to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Beautiful day here in Columbus. More than 100,000 on hand again to watch the Buckeyes. And the opponent this afternoon, the Falcons. We've got a good one, 7-0. Scott McMullen comes back out. Well, they had to go 30 yards for the first touchdown thanks to the interception. Now let's see what they can do on offense. Got to like what they see right there. A nice run for Maurice Hall. Pickup of about eight yards. That's what they want to establish. They want to establish this run. They just run the off tackle. You can see they do a good job. Big Bryce Bishop pulls around there and opens a hole for Maurice Hall. If they can get their running game established, it's going to take a lot of pressure off of McMullen throwing the ball. Craig Krenzel on the sideline, suited up, but he's got the visor on. He has not practiced all week, strained that elbow in that victory against North Carolina State last week. There is a risk, of course, of further injuring that, so he's kept that arm quiet. And this one broken up and a flag comes in. Keon Newsom breaks up the pass, but the flag comes flying in. Pass intended for Michael Jenkins. They're going to get pass interference on Newsom. Did a good job going after the football, but he just grabbed Michael Jenkins on the way by with that left hand. And the referee was right on the spot and threw the flag. The spot. Automatic first down. So the pass interference penalty. Pushes the Buckeyes ahead. You can see on the left side of your screen, Newsom's going after the ball, but right before he jumped in front of Jenkins, that left hand grabbed Jenkins. And you can, sometimes can get away with that, Craig, but when the referee is standing right there watching you, it's tough to get away. But uh, great try by Newsom. It's all about when you can get away with it. Exactly. Time to hand off goes to Hall, and it looks like there may have been a fumble. Bowling Green says there was. They say they've got the football, and they do. Keon Newsom. And another turnover forced by Bowling Green. They said they needed to get turnovers to be in this ball game, and they are right in this ball game. Second turnover of the day for Bowling Green, and you can see just a basic run play. And again, Maurice Hall gets piled up in there. Newsom does a great job of pulling that ball out, number 17, and falling on it. That. Will Teague makes the recovery. I'll tell you what, that'll fire up your club. They said, get that ball away from the Buckeyes. Give it back to our offense. Number one in the nation. And here is why. They have had success throwing the football. They have had success running it so far in this game. Pope again the carry. Another first down for Bowling Green. And they run this spread offense, and a lot of people think that since they're all spread out, they want to throw the ball every down, and that's not true. This Bowling Green offense runs the ball very well. They averaged over 215 yards on the ground last year, and this spread offense creates a lot of natural running lanes. It keeps your defense honest. There's no doubt about that. Then wrinkle in the no huddle. Pope again gets the carry. A couple of tough yards as he plunges ahead to the 46-yard line. Robert Reynolds brings him down on that first down run. 
P.J. Pope, the sophomore out of Fairfield, Ohio. One yard gain to the 46, second down nine. Second down at nine, pick up just one. Harris alone in the backfield. Five receivers spread out. Slips, falls, and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. He was on the move, trying to get away from Robert Reynolds, but couldn't do it. And now a design quarterback draw, and Josh Harris just loses his footing. You see it's a design draw, a lot of green grass in front of him. He just loses his footing, but that quarterback draw is going to be crucial for him also to keep this defense honest. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter here at Ohio Stadium. Bowling Green and Ohio State are locked up 7-all. We've had interceptions, fumbles, and a couple of touchdowns. It's been entertaining. We'll come back for more in a moment. For Chris, September day for football, Ohio State and Bowling Green locked up at 7-all here in Columbus. And Darian Scott being carted off the field, a left ankle injury. So they lose the senior across that defensive line. One of three Lombardi Award candidates. You have to Marcus Green to take his spot now. Bowling Green has the football. Third down and 12. Harris getting chase. Let's go with the football just in time as he's brought down incomplete. Robert Reynolds in hot pursuit. Ohio State does a good job blitzing Robert Reynolds right in Harris's face. They wanted to try to throw the ball front side. Harris does a good job. Instead of taking the sack, just getting rid of the football, though, not losing those yards. But Ohio State, they're going to bring some heat. They know that they can't give Harris a lot of time to sit in that pocket and throw the football. Nate Fry comes in to punt for Bowling Green. So Greg Brandon, the head coach of the Falcons. This one clearly trying to kick away from Gamble, and it rolls into the end zone. Perhaps they'll take a touchback instead of trying to pin him down inside the 10-yard line. Let's take a look now at our Pontiac first quarter stats. Ohio State and Bowling Green score locked up. Bowling Green has the overall advantage right now, according to the numbers. Still pretty close. Bowling Green, of course, throwing the ball a lot more. Ohio State, real balance. They're starting to get that running game going, and then the quick three-step drops by McMullen. They've had some success outside throwing the football. So first and ten for the Buckeyes. Runs club on defense now for Bowling Green. Ross in the backfield for Ohio State. McMullen straight back. And this one just out of the hands from Michael Jenkins incomplete. Let's go to the sidelines now and Anne Marie Anderson. Ohio State's Darian Scott has sprained his left ankle. He was carted off, as you saw earlier. They're going to take a look at him in halftime, evaluate then, and see whether or not he's going to come back in the second half. Guys? All right, Anne Marie, thanks very much. A couple of nagging injuries here and there for Ohio State. They've been able to overcome that. That's what depth will be able to do. But I'll tell you what, you lose a senior like that, not knowing the extent of the injury at this point. Darren Scott's big player for him up front on defense. That would be a big loss for the Buckeyes. Second and ten for their offense. Cohen leads this one to Carter. Spins ahead to about the 26, maybe the 27 yard line. Drew Carter. Being used quite a bit here in the first half. Daniel Sales on the stop. And that's the first time McMullen dropped any further than three steps, and then he still throws the ball into the flat. So they're not trying to, to have McMullen throw the ball downfield as of yet. They want him to get into a rhythm, get comfortable before they try to start throwing the ball downfield for him with him. Keep it a little bit more simple. Keep it simple, especially with a guy that hasn't played a whole lot. Get your running game going, throw the short stuff, then try to hit him over the top. Glass in motion. Going straight back on third and short. He gets chased. Trying to run for the first down. Dives, loses the ball out of bounds, but it looks like he'll be marked well short of the first down. Needed to get to the 30. Tried to leap ahead of Mitch Hewitt. Monty Cooley, but they both knock him out of bounds. And I'll tell you what the coaches are going to tell him in the film. 
don't take this kind of hit, Scott. We can't afford to get you injured also. You got to like the guy and his intensity here and his aggressiveness and trying to get the first down. But as a quarterback, you can't take these kind of shots and, and risk getting injured. Listen to this. That's not where you want your quarterback, Craig. Charles Sharon back to receive this punt, but whistles stop play on the field. Prior to the snap, false start offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Got to put the Buckeyes back about five more yards. B.J. Sander in to uh, do the punting, the senior out of Cincinnati. Done a pretty good job, averaging nearly 43 yards a boot. It's Charles Sharon about a 10 yard average on punt returns for the Falcons. Early second quarter. Beautiful punt. Sharon back inside his 25. Rolls to his right, tries to turn the corner, no dice, says the Buckeyes. That's where the Falcons will start, but again, a flag comes in near the line of scrimmage. Let's see what this is going to be. It was fourth and six. They're still sorting things out. Looks like it's going to be against Bowling Green. I'm not sure what the call is as of yet, but they're talking to Ohio State. Well, I'm guessing at this point it's against the Falcons. It looks like it is. A five-yard penalty for his offside still brings up fourth and one. I guess the discussion is... Running into the kicker. Huh? Defense. That five-yard penalty is declined. Ball turns over. First down, Bowling Green. Wouldn't have gotten the first down anyway. Yeah, that's different from roughing the kicker, which brings an automatic first down. Running into the kicker is just a five-yard penalty. All right, we're going to take a timeout here at Ohio Stadium. 7-7 seven, seven game early in the second quarter. Undeniably one of the best places to be on Saturdays in the fall, Ohio Stadium, Patchen Tree Spectacular. Here in Columbus. That's where we are at Ohio Stadium. Bowling Green and number four, Ohio State, along with J.C. Pearson and Ann Marie Anderson. I'm Craig Kishan. Nice to have you with us in this 7-7 game. Bowling Green State. Thinking coming in, they can definitely play with this club. Harris. Gets chased and brought down, little or no gain by A.J. Hawk. And now a designed run for Josh Harris, and we're going to see a lot more of that. We're also going to see some option. They want Harris to be able to make some plays running the football, which he does a great job of doing. They want him, they're going to need him to make some plays on the ground. Harris out of the no huddle. Doing a nice job of orchestrating this offense. Quick pass and another big hit by the Buckeyes. McGrady catches and falls right away. A.J. Hawk there to come up with a big blow. <laughs> he didn't just fall. He got knocked down. A.J. Hawk, just a quick throw, blitz adjustment. A.J. Hawk waiting right in the middle of the field and just lays McGrady out. Funny, A.J. Hawk was telling the story earlier this week, you know, when he was a kid playing flag football, he didn't like the flags because he likes to hit. He likes contact. That's a linebacker's mentality, and he's a good one. He knew that from early on. Fumble at Ohio State. Looks like they have come up with the football. They have been applying pressure to Harris, and they forced the fumble. Simon Frazier there for the Buckeyes. They need Josh, they needed Josh Harris to make good decisions. This one was not a good decision. You've got to get rid of the football. You can see it's not open. Don't pull it down and try to run. Get rid of the football. You know they're coming at you. The ball gets knocked out. Simon Fraser falls on it right there. The Buckeyes have a big turnover and great field position. That's something Bowling Green did not want to happen today. 
Bobby Carpenter came in and stripped Harris of the football, giving his offense a chance. And now on the carry goes Ross, looking for some running room. Dances across the line of scrimmage. So the Buckeyes, for the second time here in the first half, get great field position off the turnover. They bring in Lydell Ross, more of a power runner than Maurice Hall. They're in the red zone. They're trying to get this running game established, so they bring in Ross, a guy who can run a little stronger between the tackles. Second down and six. McMullen, heavy rush, and he's going to be brought down. Bowling Green's Mike Thaler there to get him first. And a loss back to the 23-yard line. In this zone blitz defense, the whole objective is to mess up the blocking scheme. And you can see they just bring too many people off that right side. And Ohio State doesn't have enough guys to block them. And they come up with the big sack. Mitch Hewitt in the backfield. Third down, third down. Well, they stay fresh, as we mentioned. They will shuffle up to eight linemen in throughout this game. Third down and 12, loss of six. McMullen to pass. Ball stripped away. Bowling Green thinks they've got the football. And it looks like Ohio State recovers. So it's going to be fourth down back at the 30-yard line. Daniel Sales there to apply the pressure and strip that ball away. But they come in and they push Ohio State back. Watch number 53 right there, Daniel Sales. Great job of not giving up on the play. He's blocked, but he spins around and knocks the ball out of McMullen's hands. Now they do a good job. Now Ohio State's got a long field goal attempt. Mike Nugent, 47-yard attempt. Play a leg, and he gets it through the uprights, and the Buckeyes take the lead. Nugent's 47-yard field goal gives Ohio State a 10-7 lead from Ohio Stadium. Ten seven, Ohio State leading Bowling Green State. Ten oh nine to go here in the second quarter from Ohio Stadium. SBC College Football Saturday. Get up to speed on the latest stats, chat scores, and more with SBC Yahoo DSL. We're ready to kick this one off. Nugent just had the 47-yard field goal coming off the turnover again, forced by the Buckeye defense. Brandon Jones, two yards deep in his end zone, thinks otherwise, and they'll take the touchback up at the 20-yard line. So Bowling Green has given up the football a couple of times in the first half, and the Buckeyes have been able to take advantage. One thing you don't want to do if you're coming into the big house like this it's tough to make up for turnovers. Bowling Green was able to do it once on a beautiful long drive, 87 yards. You see this, Ohio State actually went backwards to come up on that drive with the uh, field goal, but nonetheless, they have a lead. So Josh Harris at his own 20. Takes over first down and 10. Looks, throws right as his receiver. Native maybe four or five yards for Steve Sanders. And we'd like to welcome in now Rex Kearns into our booth along with uh, J.C. Pearson and myself, Craig Kishana. Rex, thanks for joining us. Rex, uh, All-American quarterback on the 1968 Ohio State National Championship team. And uh, Rex, your team is being honored here, 35th anniversary. It's got to be nice to be back. Oh, it's great to be back. Uh, whenever our team gets together, we have a tremendous turnout, and it's a lot of fun to reminisce, and it's uh, hard to believe it's been 35 years. <laughs> well, Rex, how would your national championship team stack up against last year's national championship team? They wouldn't have even recruited us. We're too small. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're standing down there looking at our team. The two biggest guys we had were our offensive uh, tackles, Dave Foley and Rufus Mays, and they were uh, 6'5", 245. 
they wouldn't even be recruited today, or they might be recruited as a quarterback. <laughs> but you know, the players might have changed over time, but your team back in 68 put up some tremendous offensive numbers, uh, 32 points a game over 400 yards, kind of unheard of at that time. But especially in a Woody A's offense, that was unheard of. Uh, I, I think we started a little new era at that time, Craig. Josh Harris on the fumbled uh, snap. And again, A.J. Hawk. And the old horseshoe getting a little bit louder here. And Harris's team on third and long now forced to punt. Well, Rex, I know your team was honored. You had a chance to be on the field. And I uh, want to thank you for stopping up and spending some time with, with us up in the booth and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. And uh, go Bucks. <laughs> All right, that's Rex Kern, and uh, it's always good to visit with tradition here at Ohio State. That punt by Nate Fry off the side of his foot, out of bounds. And we will take a break here with 8.40 to go in the second quarter. Ohio State will have the football when we come back. SBC College Football Saturday. Get up to speed on the latest stats, chats, scores, and more with SBC Yahoo DSL. Back at Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes leading Bowling Green State 10 to 7. Scott McMullen in that quarterback being able to take advantage of a couple of turnovers. And a nice run by Maurice Hall. On first and 10, gets about seven or eight. Ted Pipkow there to bring him down as he crosses midfield into Falcon territory. Great lead block by the fullback, Brandon Schnitker. You see him just right there at the bottom of the screen, number 43, that allows Maurice Hall to get through there. And whenever you're struggling in the running game, the fullback plays a very, very key role in getting that untracked because he's the lead blocker. You just jump right behind a big guy like that, and you should be able to gain some positive yards. Second down and three. And the handoff goes to Hall, easily picks up the first down to the 41-yard line of Bowling Green. Mitch Hewitt there to make the stop for the Falcons, along with Keon Newsom. This offensive line is now starting to do a good job of finding somebody to block. Now they're just trying to zone block the front side. Coordinator telling us yesterday you like to establish the run, but you have to pick your spots to run, especially it hasn't worked in the first three weeks of the season so far. So far this afternoon, they've done a pretty nice job. Jenkins on the catch, spins away, flag down along the line of scrimmage. And this one looks like it's going to go against Ohio State. And we'll wait for the call. Jenkins almost spun free. And this one on the Buckeyes. 7.24 to go here midway through the first. And go back to that run game. It just didn't really get established, and there weren't opportunities. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving. It's snap. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the thing. You've got to be able to pick your points to be able to, to at least try. You do, and... It hasn't worked for them so far this season, and, and they said last night, if it's not run, if it's not working, meaning the run game, we'll go away from it. We're not going to just bang our head against the wall. Today, they're really starting to show that this running game is starting to come around. Penalty so far in this one, two apiece. First and 15. Mullen straight back, looking downfield. Jenkins got his hand on it. It's the first time the Buckeyes have looked downfield. Keon Newsom there on the coverage. And good coverage it was by Newsom. He forces Jenkins outside and out of bounds. And then you see his body right there, right between Jenkins and the ball. Great position by Newsom fading outside and forcing Jenkins to, to go out of bounds. You see the referee threw his hat down. That means that that's an Ill, ineligible receiver now once he steps out of bounds.
second down and 15. McBowen, pass complete. Short gainer. This one to Hall as we take a look at Big Ten scores underway. Purdue leading Arizona. Wisconsin leading North Carolina 21-14 at the break. And California and Illinois also locked up at halftime. Kent State leading Penn State. They're underway in the first quarter. Later today, Northwestern and Duke and Michigan State traveling to Notre Dame. Two teams coming off of losses last week. Third down and 12. From the 44-yard line of the Falcons. McMullen loses the football. Went to punt fake and it slipped out of his hands. Don't see that often. And, and I'm not sure if McMullen was trying to run the pump and go outside or if he just saw a defender jump the route and tried to pull it back down. Whatever the case may be, that ball is incomplete. And this is, he was actually going to throw this, you see, and pulled it down. If it's a pump fake, he's going to keep two hands on that ball and pump it. Timeout. Green. Green. First team charge, timeout. Well, Bowling Green calls a timeout as B.J. Sander was out ready to punt. Now Greg Brandon's club will uh, get a few things straightened out, trailing by just a field goal. Again, one of their keys is, you know, you, you hang around long enough in these games as they did at Purdue, especially when you come into a Big Ten opponent like this and continue to give yourself a chance. Look at the Buckeyes' uh, upcoming schedule. They'll open up the Big Ten season hosting Northwestern next Saturday here before they hit the road to Wisconsin. They've enjoyed home cooking here for the first, uh, first half of the season. Ohio State offense averaging about 29 points a game but only 44 yards on the ground. They've been able to establish their ground attack. Greg Brandon, head coach at Bowling Green. And they didn't come in here today intimidated whatsoever. They come in here and they expect to win this ball game. And he told us last night he didn't know what it was going to take, but whatever it takes, they're going to definitely try to do it. But they expect to leave here with the win. And this one beautifully goes out of bounds at the three yard line. B.J. Sander does the job for the Buckeyes, and that'll pin the Falcons back deep when we come back after the break. They trail it 10-7. Bowling Green trails by a field goal. They'll have the ball at their own three-yard line. Check out Big Ten College Football next Saturday from ESPN Plus beginning at noon. Indiana will travel to Ann Arbor to face the Michigan Wolverines and Chris Perry. Or some of you will see Iowa at Michigan State. Be sure to check local listings. College football from ESPN Plus where every game is a must win. There's Josh Harris. Once again, this will be the third start deep in his own territory. And an offensive series for Bowling Green State. Got to be careful here at the three. Harris hands off. Not much running room at all for P.J. Pope. Fred Pugic there to bring him down. And that's not their offense. They're not an under center just turn and hand the ball off to the running back type of offense. They're... They want to spread you out, but like you said, they're severely limited when they're deep in their own territory, and they've just got to be real conservative. They cannot afford to turn the ball over again down here. Very much in this game with the score only 10-7. to 7. Inside of six minutes to go here in the first half. Harris again, handoff Pope, makes it to the five. Runs into a wall led by Tim Anderson of the Buckeyes. This Buckeye defense has really done a pretty good job. They're just trying to get some breathing room here, just trying to run 
the ISO up front. Ohio State, Robert Reynolds, great job of playing the run. This is a big play right here because if Bowling Green doesn't get a lot of room, field position really, really goes in favor of Ohio State. And it looks like Josh Harris needs a timeout. So Bowling Green takes their second timeout. They're not used to huddling up, running that no huddle offense, that quick pace. They generally don't have to worry about the play clock. But you don't want to get pinned back any further here, only at the five on third down. They've got to stay very conservative, make sure they wrap up the football. The running back has to put two hands around the ball because Ohio State's going to be trying to pull it out of there and then hope for a good punt and see if uh, they can try to get out of the hole. And field position, like we talked about coming in, is so critical for both of these offenses. And coming up at the half, we'll have an interview with Archie Griffin, two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Take a look at the Big Ten and top 25 scores and have highlights from this game as well. Let's go down to Ann Marie Anderson on the sideline. Guys, Bowling Green quarterback Josh Harris is being supported here today by his wife of six months, the former Tammy Smith. Smith, however, is caught in the middle a little bit because she is an Ohio State graduate. Smith and Harris met at a track meet when they ran for opposing high schools. Harris went on to Bowling Green, and Smith went to Ohio State, where she became an accomplished athlete in her own right. She was an All-American and Big Ten champion in the high jump. She got a lot of pressure from her friends to support her school, but she's rooting for her husband today. That's not a shade of red, that's a shade of orange. <laughs> that's for sure. She better be supporting her husband, or it's going to be a, a pretty disruptive household tonight. <laughs> And once again, Josh Harris is forced to call timeouts. So Bowling Green has burned all three of their first half timeouts here in just a matter of minutes. One defensively and two here on offense. What's the confusion, do you think, JC? They're in the huddle, and they're not used to being in the huddle. They're used to getting the play called in from the sideline, hurrying to the line, and then making an adjustment there, running a play. I mean, how difficult it is, is it right now? They're third and eight deep in their own territory. They're not going to try anything fancy. They're just probably going to either run the ball or throw it very quickly out into the flat because they don't want any turnover. So really confusing why there's so much confusion on the Bowling Green sideline. Here's the upcoming schedule for Bowling Green. They'll have next weekend off and then start the max season against Central Michigan. Then a couple of road trips to Western and Eastern and then host a big one against Northern Illinois in late October. Not a make or break game here. They love to win it, but their season is the map. Head coach Greg Brandon made no bones about it last night. Third down and eight, no timeouts left here. Harris. Shotgun pass is dropped. Charles Sharon was so wide open, he was running before he caught that ball. That's the number one rule of a wide receiver. You've got to catch the football before you run. Charles Sharon wide open right here. Watch his head. His head turns away from the ball before the ball gets there, and then it hits him right in the chest. Harris can't throw a better ball than this, and if he catches it, it's a first down. They've got a new set of downs. Instead, he turns away, takes his eyes off the ball, and it's incomplete, and now they've got a punt out of their end zone. There's Chris Gamble. He should have some running room here. That's it, Fry punted to him. Barely does and takes a foot out of bounds. So a great job by Nate Fry, the Bowling Green State punter. They're doing all they can to avoid Chris Gamble. And he had a little bit of running room there, but his momentum took in a foot out of bounds. Couldn't place that one any better. No, but they still have great field position. Four minutes, 26 seconds left in the half. A lot of time, and you're starting on your opponent's 42-yard line. I mean, that they've put their defense in some adverse situations, and so far the defense has held up pretty well, but you can't keep putting those guys in tough situations. Schnitger and Hall in the backfield for McMullen. Ross the carry, I should say. Crosses the 40. Gets a couple. Thaler there to bring him down. So it's up to the defense here. Trying to keep the Buckeyes at least out of the end zone. 
And Ohio State, they're going to this running game. They haven't had a lot of success. So they're going to have to, I'm sure they're going to have to start having McMullen throw the ball, run some more screens, run some quick plays outside, but they've got to mix it up a little more. See McMullen's numbers, efficient numbers, 6 out of 10, only 54 yards. They're stopping the run, though. The Falcons right up front. Ross had nowhere to go. And Devon Parks there to bring him down. This defense, they're going to be blitzing and coming from all different angles. You can see it takes too long to run this ISO, and they're all over them. Great job by Bowling Green, and they're staying aggressive. That's what they want to do. Devin Parks coming off the edge there. Run blitz, stop the run, put the burden on the quarterback, McMullen, to beat you, and that's exactly what Bowling Green is trying to do. Third down and nine for Ohio State at the 41 of Bowling Green. Hartsock went in motion. McMullen goes the other way and finds his other tight end, Ryan Hamby. And they're going to be just a little bit shy as Daniel Sales brings down Hamby about a yard shy of that first down. And this crowd is screaming for them to go for it. And they're in territory and they just run the boot. And Hamby, Jason Morton, just kind of gets lost there. You can see him come in at the end and make the tackle, but Hamby's already got a pretty big gain, and now it's fourth and short. Now they really have to rely on that run game. Fourth and a short two. Hand off, Ross. Plenty of room. He's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown. Fourth down and two, and Ross found an opening and that's all he needed to go right up the middle. A backbreaker for Bowling Green State's defense. And a big confidence boost for Ohio State in their running game. They've struggled all season long, even most of the first half today, and then they finally break a big one. Lydell Ross taking it to the house. Nugent on for the extra point. It is good, and Ohio State extends its lead now to 10 points at 17 to 7. Lydell Ross does a good job. Watch him make the first guy miss with the stutter right there, and then cuts right back behind those big offensive linemen, and they lose him. They don't know where he's at, and by the time they see him, he's in full stride downfield. A great job of using his footwork to get back to the hole and then it's just a foot race for Lydell Ross and he wins well of course Ohio State defending national champion how do you get better than that how do you be successful here in the year 2003 let's hear from head coach Jim Tressel I think it's the same every year and that's if you could just get close to becoming as good as you're capable of uh, that's when you're disappointed is when you don't is when you you drop a ball game that you say man we could have done this better and that better. I can't believe I called this play. And, and you know, regrets are the hardest things to handle. With. So success to us is, you know, let's get as close to being at our potential, our ability level, as we possibly can. And if that gives us a national championship or a Big Ten championship, then everyone will be, you know, screaming and yelling and buying T-shirts and all that stuff. And if it doesn't, we've got to feel okay about looking on the middle. Jim Tressel, not forgetting what your goals need to be season to season, no matter what you've just accomplished. It's a mark of a successful team as uh, ball is kicked through the end zone. We're here at Ohio Stadium. Bowling Green and number four, Ohio State in the Battle of Ohio, along with J.C. Pearson and Marie Anderson. I'm Craig Kishan. A 17-7 game. The Buckeyes out in front. Time now for our Jiffy Lube well-oiled machine. Look at that scoring drive. Four plays, 42 yards. The big 33-yard run by Ross equals the longest run by a running back this season for the Buckeyes. But remember, it was all set up by field position. The defense did a great job of holding Bowling Green, forced a bad punt, and now they start on the 42-yard line. Harris comes out of there throwing from his 20 and finds Magner. Called Cole Magner's name a lot early in that first quarter. He's been held in check since. Robert Reynolds here in the stop. Let's check in with Anne Marie Anderson. Moments ago, the offense.
defensive unit was getting chewed out when head coach Brian, uh, Greg Brandon broke in and said, well, it's just poise that we're missing, and we want to start with you, Josh Harris. Get some poise. Challenging his senior quarterback. Pass over to McGrady. You know, Harris was telling us last night, and you know, I mentioned earlier about, he says, well, I can't go out and catch passes and that type of thing. Got to rely on my teammates, giving them a lot of credit. He said, everyone has to carry their load. It's my job to manage it. And the problem is, is they, they depend on him so much to make big plays. He's saying that he helps manage those guys, but they all look to him to make big plays, whether it's with his arm or with his legs. He's the guy that makes that whole team go. Fires went into James Hawkins. The pass is complete, and we have a second down and five, and just a moment to bring up the clock. Harris's numbers, 120 yards, throwing a touchdown and an interception so far here in the first half. Buck trails by 10, and this one, under heavy pressure, throws it away. Will Smith in pursuit, along with Tim Anderson. And Ohio State able to get into the backfield, get pressure on Harris with just a four-man rush. Will Smith, Tim Anderson, Simon Frazier, Marcus Green, those guys up front are winning the line of scrimmage. They're not having to blitz linebackers that much, which really helps their defense. This one nearly picked off by Chris Gamble. And you know what he saw ahead of him? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing but green. And I told you, Chris Gamble, he's going to start jumping those quick short routes they've been running them all day you can see another just three step stop outside this is actually the play the cold manger but on the the one to chris gamble outside right here just a three step drop gamble jumps the route and really should have had the interception and would have been in the end zone you can see right there he knows it now campbell will get a chance on this punt return Ohio State's going to get a little bit of time left on the clock. Nate Fry does the punting, and a boomer. Gamble lets it go, and it just makes the end zone. Nice move by Chris Gamble. A minute 12 for the Buckeyes. And they'll get the ball at their own 20-yard line. I'm not going to say it's been conservative approach offensively so far in this one but do you it take has. a chance do you take a chance with 112 to go well I, I think this is an opportunity to let McMullen throw the ball a little bit you're going to your two-minute package you're up by 10 points you've got to open it up at some point they're coming out with three wide receivers here so we'll see if they're going to give him a chance to throw the ball downfield this Tom handoff goes to Hall Looking for some room, gets about four yards. And to answer your question, Craig, no, they're not. They're going to stay very conservative. They're going to run the football, be satisfied with this 10-point lead going into the locker room, and just manage the game. They don't, they don't want to take a chance, obviously, of turning the ball over down here and letting Bowling Green get on the board. Craig Krenzel, the heart and soul of this team during their 17-game winning streak, 18-1 and one as a starter. Not able to play this afternoon with that strained elbow. Has even picked up a football since that North Carolina State game last Saturday. Got some running room this time for Maurice Hall. Picks up a first down up to the 31-yard line. Daniel Sales on the tackle for Bowling Green. Frenzel's season numbers. Even keel, but uh, a threat running the football. Bottom line is when the ball is in his hands, Ohio State's able to produce. And he's a winner. The stats don't bear the fact of what Craig Frenzel brings to this team. He's just a winner, and he refuses to let him lose. Hall breaks free to the left side. He gets up near midfield to the 50-yard line as time expires here in the first half. Jason Morton brings him down. And under the direction of Scott McMullen, the senior quarterback making his first start in two years, 
The Ohio State Buckeyes have been able to take advantage of some Bowling Green turnovers and take a 17-7 lead into the locker room here in this battle between Ohio State and Bowling Green. So the Buckeyes have won three straight. Triple overtime last Saturday. And they hope to keep this uh, lead against Bowling Green State, although they had troubles last week. They were up 24-7 against North Carolina State in the second half last week. Let's go down to Anne Marie Anderson, who's with head coach Jim Trussell. Coach, I know the running game was a major concern for you last week. How do you feel about your team's performance in this first half? I think we're getting a little bit better. We've got a long way to go, but uh, you know, it's good to see us get on track a little bit. But we're playing against a good football team, and they're dangerous. We get the ball to start the second half. What we do with it is going to be key. What are you going to tell them about that sloppy first quarter? Well, you know, you can't turn the ball over. And uh, you're not going to win many games if you uh, lose a turnover margin. So we've got to get that squared away. Thanks, Coach. Guys? All right, very good. Halftime here from Ohio Stadium. We've had some turnovers. The Buckeyes have been able to take advantage. A big run by Ross to extend a 17-7 lead here at the break from Columbus. Bowling Green trailing Ohio State here at halftime, 17 to 7, as we are close to starting the second half. And check out Big Ten College Football, however, next Saturday from ESPN Plus, beginning at noon. Indiana will travel to Ann Arbor to face the Michigan Wolverines and Chris Perry. Or some of you will see Iowa at Michigan State. Be sure to check local listings. College football from ESPN Plus, where every game is a must win. Let's go down to the sideline now. Ann Marie. Anderson. I'm here waiting for coach Brandon Gregg. Looks like he's still addressing his team for a second here. So guys, I'll throw it up to you when he's ready. Come on back down to me. All right, Anne Marie, very good. He's uh, of course they burned the three timeouts late in the first half and she reported earlier, you know, the onus now is put on his quarterback, Josh Harris, to get this team back in contention. Well, for these guys to win and we knew it coming in, Josh Harris had to play a great game. First half is a little subpar. They're gonna, he's going to need to pick it up the second half. All right, Anne Marie now has Greg Brandon. Coach, you never really seem to get your offense really fully working in the first half. What went wrong? Well, that's a good defense. Uh, we, I, I knew it was going to be a good defense. You know, we got to pick our spots. We gave them the short field. Our defense is playing well. Uh, we need to take care of the football better and uh, get back in this ball game. What did you tell your players about containing Ohio State's running game, which now seems to be getting back on track? Well, their running game isn't hurting us right now. You know, when they get to short field, uh, you know, they're going to run for first downs. And, uh, you know, we just need to uh, tackle a little bit better, keep the ball in front of us, and we'll be all right. Thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. All right, Anne-Marie, thanks very much. And there is uh, Josh Harris. Scott McMullen talking with Craig Krenzel. They'll be communicating, as I'm sure they have been throughout practice this week. The scenario kind of unfolded early that Krenzel likely would not play in this game. Right, and that was a big plus for McMullen because he had all week to prepare as the starter, and Krenzel obviously was there as another coach, so to speak, to help him with what he's going to face on the field today. He's done a good job. They haven't put a lot of pressure on him to make a lot of throws, especially with their running game starting to get on track. All he's had to do was take some three-step drops and throw the ball outside. Takes a lot of pressure off you when you haven't been uh, in a real competitive situation leading a team such as Ohio State for the last two years is number seven of 11 for 62 yards. But uh, when they're running the football at 123 yards a clip as they did in the first half, that certainly helps. So we are just about set here to start the second half. Bowling Green, which trails by 10, will kick off. And Gamble takes it at his 12. Eludes one tackler. Not the second, but he gets the ball up near the 30-yard line. And Ohio State will start the second half from there. Chris Gamble almost had the interception return for a touchdown in the first half. Just couldn't quite come up with the ball. Starting to taste it a little bit. He's an amazing player, a two-way player. Hasn't played a whole lot of offense yet for Ohio State this year but last year man he was big for him playing over a hundred plays a game for four or five games in a row and that I mean that is just unbelievable 
He opens up with Ross in the backfield. Hartsock went in motion. Ross spins away. But the footwork won't get him back to the line of scrimmage. Good defensive start for Mitch Hewitt and company for the Falcons. Devin Parks also back in the backfield being disruptive. But, you know, Ohio State obviously wants to come out and continue to run the football. And you know, Bowling Green obviously knows that as well. So they're going to try to get up the field and see if they can blow some of those running plays up. As Coach Greg Brandon said, you know, we have to tackle. Second down and ten. Mullen back to pass. Dumps it off to his tight end, Hamby. And he takes it up to the 37-yard line. Early start here in the third quarter. The Buckeyes leading by 10. We are at Ohio Stadium here in Columbus. Bowling Green University in Ohio against number four Ohio State. Along with J.C. Pearson and Marie Anderson, I'm Craig Kishan. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's been a good one up till now. 17-7 lead for the Buckeyes. Scott McBowen on third down and two. Eyes up the defense. Five receivers spread out in the shotgun. Rolling, rolling, and this one is picked off. Jansen Patton has the football for Bowling Green, still on his feet, and finally hauled down inside the 25-yard line. The first interception on the season for Bowling Green State's defense. And surprising that Ohio State runs an empty backfield. Anyway, why not run the ball? The running game is going. They snap it early. They're out of sync from the very beginning. And then McMullen underthrows the receiver. And Patton does a great job playing the football. Comes up with a huge turnover and returns it all the way down to the 22-yard line. You can see the ball was snapped before McMullen was even ready, and then he rolls out and just short arms the football, and Patton makes a great play on it. But if you're running the ball two yards to go, why not continue to run the ball? Jansen Patton, the senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. First interception of the season. Greg Brandon's club is a chance here now, trailing by 10 after the interception. It's time now for our Volvo Big Ten leaders. Looking at that total defense, Ohio State, third in the Big Ten at this point. They'll be tested right now. Balls at their 23-yard line for Bowling Green after the interception return by Patton. Golden opportunity for the Falcons. Harris up over center. Lateral back. Magner looking to pass. Does. It's dropped at the one-yard line. Craig Jarrett making the start at tight end here in this game. Was the start, I should say, and got knocked out. Returns, but drops this one at the one-yard line. And they just run the pass off the bubble screen that they ran so many times the first half, and Jarrett just drops the football. I mean, you've got to catch this ball. He's got his eyes on it. You just have to squeeze that football. If they do, they're in the end zone. Bag of tricks early in the first half. Trying to begin now. This one tipped way up. Intercepted by Ohio State. A.J. Hawk has it. And the Buckeyes get it back. Oh, that tip pass, and that ball was just waiting, waiting, and waiting to fall into Buckeyes' hands. And that's why you've got to make a play. When you have a chance to make it, you've got to make it. They go from possibly scoring a touchdown on one play. Now the ball gets knocked up in the air. A.J. Hawk goes up and catches it, and now you lose the football. Bowling Green was right in position to do exactly what they wanted to do to get back into this game. Instead, A.J. Hawk comes up with the big interception and takes the ball away from him. Buckeyes first and 10 at their own 26. Ross, carry, a couple of yards. Wow, somewhat deflating. 
for Bowling Green. As you mentioned, a golden opportunity. Woulda, shoulda, coulda is what you say coming out of that. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, but you've got to make the plays when you have a chance. Especially when you're Bowling Green playing against the number four team in the country, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity. But give Ohio State credit. They, they kept battling. Second and seven. McMullen chased out of the pocket, and he's going to be hauled down inside the 20. And let's check in on the sidelines with Ann Marie Anderson. Guys, in the first half, you saw Buckeyes left tackle Darian Scott being carted off the field. Word is he has a high ankle sprain on his left ankle. He is out for the game. In fact, he's already showered. Guys. All right, thanks very much, Ann Marie. Ohio State's defense uh, deep across that line. Three Lombardi Award candidates. He is one of them, but won't return to this one. Ted Pipkow got the sack. They marked it at the 19-yard line, so third down and long, third and 17 now for McMullen. Straight back in the pocket. And this one thrown out of bounds up near midfield. Really missed his receiver. Looking for Michael Jenkins there, J.C. Just not on the same page with Michael Jenkins. Jenkins runs the go route, and McMullen throws the deep comeback on the outside and you can see the comeback is wide open they just read different things there in the ball not even close to jenkins this bowling green defense give this, these guys a lot of credit they've been in a lot of adverse situations and they've hung in there craig they they are really playing well you always hear the phrase don't flinch and they certainly have not done that sharon calls for a fair catch at the 45 yard line they'll be in great shape coming back 11.21 to go in the third. We'll be back in a moment. Surprisingly, neither team has been able to take advantage of turnovers here early in the second half. So the score remains Ohio State 17-7 over Bowling Green at this point. As you take a look at McMullen talking with Krenzel. Trying to decipher what happened on that last incomplete pass fumbled snap and Harris wisely jumps on the football Ohio State was right there on defense so now what you want to start after that a great field position loss of eight second down and 18 Harris stands alone in the backfield out of the shotgun Five receivers are split. Quick pass complete. Sharon gets back near the original line of scrimmage. Mark it at the 46. Tackled there by Bobby Carpenter. So getting him back in chunks. Do a good job just throwing it over the middle to Charles Sharon the defense is really widening outside especially to the three receiver side leaves the middle of the field wide open third down and eight Harris heavy pressure on the run dives ahead to the 50 well short of the first down got tripped up just a bit enough to throw off his balance and again Robert Reynolds and Bobby Carpenter there along with Mike DeAndre And this is not a designed quarterback draw. Harris has to pull it down because the rush is right on him. He doesn't get enough for a first down, and they've got to punt the football away. But they, they were getting exactly what they were wanting. They were winning the, the battle of field position. They just haven't been able to take advantage of it, Greg. Nate Fry now to punt to Chris Gamble. Gamble back at his 10. Brian, the left-footed punter. This bounces in Bowling Green down to it inside the 20-yard line, and it will be marked at the 17 for Ohio State. 
McMullen's uh, last start for Ohio State two years ago, 2001, against the Illini of Illinois. Played the first half of football. But didn't uh, fare very well and got pulled at halftime. And here's one of his good throws here for a touchdown. He's thrown a couple decent balls today, but they were all just easy three-step drops. When he's had to go downfield with the ball today, he struggled quite a bit. At that time, he was thrown in the mix when Steve Balasari was suspended a couple of days before that game with a run-in with the law. So the chances have been uh, few and far between right here, but he's been able to take advantage today as club has the lead. And that's what matters most. And they're going to come back to this run game. You can see right here, they're just trying to cut it all the way back. Maurice Hall, there's not a lot there. They just keep pounding away with the running game and hoping they can break a long one like they did at the end of the first half. But when you're not throwing the ball well, like they're not doing today, the running game, you've got to stick, stick with it. Second down and six. Pitch back this time, Hall cuts it back over the middle, picks up a first down. Good looking run for Maurice Hall. And this works well, this toss play, because they get this defense moving sideways, and now Hall can try to find a hole, whether it's outside or cutting it back inside. That's when they've been most effective, when they've been able to get this defense flowing one way and then allow the running back to just pick and choose a hole. Ohio State's running game continues to do rather well. Pitch back again to Hall. This time he is tripped up. Nowhere to go as Daniel Sales comes in and makes the initial hit. And this is where Bowling Green has to use their quickness and speed defensively to their advantage. They've got to try to jump through some gaps, get up the field, and disrupt this running game because they know that Ohio State is going to try to run the ball as much as possible. And then your corners outside have got to stay real close and man up on those quick throws. This is where it becomes the second half grinded out that Ohio State would prefer to do right. Now. Right. Falling back on second and 11. Completes the pass to his tight end, Hartsock. Not much there is Jansen Patton there on the coverage. And you see, that doesn't hurt you. If he's going to throw the ball underneath, you just have to run up and make the tackle. Limit the yards after the catch. Yak, and that's something that every team, both offensively and defensively, keeps track of. If you can limit the yards after the catch, you're going to be successful. Third down and nine for Scott McMullen. Senior out of Granville. Takes the handoff. Rolls the other way on the bootleg. Keeps it himself. Dives ahead for the first down. It's a little like Krenzel there. And he ran the ball as a good decision. Really, it was his only decision because everybody was covered downfield, so he had no choice other than to run the ball and did a good job of running. It looks like he's banged up a little, but you can see right there they just run the boot. They get Daniel Sales to bite inside, and he's got to run the football. It looks like he was uh, banged up a little bit. You can see everybody's covered downfield. He has no choice but to run the ball and takes a pretty good shot. Sales and Patton gave him a shot. This time Hall finds some running room. Bust into Falcon territory up to the 40-yard line. Patton there to bring him down along with Michael Malone. And at some point, this defense has to wear down. They're not very big up front, and this offensive line just keeps laying on guys, and sooner or later, you're going to get a Maurice Hall or a Ross to pop one outside. And Ross this time, I mean, Hall does a great job of using his speed and quickness, but this defense has been on the field a long time, Craig, and they've got to start wearing down. Tim Beckman said he likes to go with his whole two deep across that front four, but there are only two juniors among that group of eight. A lot of youngsters out there. Ross the carry this time for the Buckeyes. In fact, Devin Parks, a true freshman, came in uh, last January, completed high school early, and was able to enroll in 
Beat out Brian Gardner, the junior, for a starting spot. Second down at eight. Cullen again hands it off. Ross straight ahead. Gets to the 34-yard line, so it'll be third down and short from there. Ted Pipkow on the tackle for the Falcons. And like you said earlier, Craig, this is the type of football that Ohio State wants to play right now. The smash mouth, grind it out football. We're going to run it at you, dare you to stop us, because what it does is it keeps the clock running as well. So as you can see, there's only less than five minutes left in the third quarter. They're doing a good job of running the ball, controlling the time of possession. If they don't turn the ball over, they're going to be in good shape. Along with J.C. Pearson and Amber Anderson, I'm Craig Cushon. Nice to have you with us this afternoon. Third down and three for Ohio State. They stick with the running game. Ross gets the call again. And it'll be close here. He might be a little bit short. Michael Malone makes the stop along with Mitch Hewitt. Just this inside handoff. Again, and now they've got Lydell Ross in number 30, a guy that's a little stronger runner than Maurice Hall. He's there more of their inside between the tackles guy, and he gets just enough for the first down. And you can see the big difference in weight that Ohio State has, 309 pounds on average versus 261. And right now, you're starting to see that difference because they're starting to control and dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, Ohio State went back to basics this week across that front line, and it is paying off. On first and ten, Ross continues to grind it out for the Buckeyes. Ted Pipgal there on the stop for Bowling Green. And it looks like he might be running out of gas a little bit or cramping up. He's come up a little bit slow after the last couple of runs. Pickup of two. Clock continues to churn, though, under four minutes, and the Buckeyes had a pretty nice drive right now. At the 29 of Bowling Green. Ross gets the call again. Has some room. Puts his head down to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and about four from there. You at the stop, Ross gets a breather. And they run the, the counter draw. You can see Schnichter, the fullback, comes over and leads Ross up the football field. Now they're in a third and five situation. Third and four, we'll see if they stick to this power smash mouth running game or if they try to throw something quick outside to Carter. Schnichter and Hall in the backfield. Give it to Hall. And he's going to come up short. Maybe a couple. So a big stop there on third down for that Falcon defense. Mitchell Crossley in there, along with Matt Leininger. Now what does Jim Trussell do? And it looks like his offense is staying on the football field. Fourth down and two. And they are, they're going to go for it. I mean, this is a big play right here. I mean, I don't know why you don't bring your field goal team in and, and kick a field goal, but uh, obviously they feel like they can dominate the line of scrimmage and get two yards. See how much that uh, running game has the confidence at this point. Last time at fourth down and two from this territory, they scored a touchdown. All gets the call straight ahead, gets spun around, and I don't think he made it. Great effort up front there by Ted Pipkow. It looked like at one point he was going to break out of there, and Pipkow just pulls him back, and I think he's going to be short. That Bowling Green State uh, defense is ready to head out to the sideline. They're just waiting for confirmation. Looks like they're going to measure. You can see it looks like Hall is going to bust out of here right at the very end. Looks like he's going to get out of there, but you see that the defense... Pipcow just holds on and is able to pull him back. And I think they're going to be short, Craig. And then do you question the call? The fourth and two, do you, you're in field goal range. Do you kick the field goal and get three points? Because, I mean, they're not even close here, and they turn the ball over. 
Almost a yard short there. And with two minutes to go here in the third quarter, Ohio State will turn the ball over on downs when we come back. Back at Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes turn the ball over on downs to Bowling Green State with two minutes to go in the third quarter, leading this game by 10 points. A questionable call by Jim Trussell to go for it on fourth down and two. Maybe his answer was it's worked for us before in this game. They scored a touchdown out of it, but came up well short on the running effort there, trying to grind out Bowling Green. So it's first and 10 for the Falcons at their own 22. Josh Harris keeps it, starts running right away, maybe a yard. It's up to Josh Harris now, his club trailing by 10. David Patterson there to stop him after a yard game along with Mike Kudla. And I'm surprised Josh Harris hasn't run the ball more than he has today. Last year's run, he ran for over 700 yards. And, you know, today so far in the second half, even though they haven't had the ball very much, they're still, they're minus three yards in rushing. They came in averaging 575 yards of offense a game because of plays like this. Cole Magner gets back into the rhythm and takes it up near the 40-yard line. Nate Sally and Brandon Mitchell on the stop. And if they can just take their time and throw the ball, there's some room in this zone of Ohio State to complete some balls. You can see Manger just runs the slant out of that slot position, and he's wide open. Magner from Palmer, Alaska. Not too many football players in this part of the country from Alaska. He's one of them. That's a great story, too. Another quick pass and catch, this time to Steve Sanders. And Cole Bagner, I mentioned special from Alaska. Let's get more with Ann Marie Anderson. Guys, wide receiver Cole Magner was a two-sport athlete at Bowling Green last year when the Falcons basketball team suffered the loss of two starters for the season. Last December, Magner jumped in as a starter and helped Bowling Green reach, reach the MAC tournament for the fourth straight year. Of course, you expect a wide receiver to want the ball, and that carried over to the basketball court in 15 games. Magner had 22 steals. A defensive specialist when he's playing basketball, an offensive specialist when he's playing football. Thanks, Anne Marie. Charles Sharon the catch, and Bowling Green on the move. A.J. Hawk on the stop. And they use this no-huddle offense to try to control the tempo, but even though they're not huddling, they're taking a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. They should try to pick the pace up. It would definitely be in their favor. Well, we've heard the word rhythm being brought up by both coaching staffs. They are in a rhythm right now. Up until that point, if Ohio State wants to disrupt it, that's what they were able to do. Quinn Pitcock there in the stop, along with Mike DeAndre. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter here from Ohio Stadium. Turnovers so far in the second half. No points on the board by either team. It's still 17-7. Three quarters of football in the books. Ohio State leading Bowling Green State 17-7. Bowling Green on the move. Cole Magner has been a key target for Josh Harris throughout this game. Magner's been their big play guy, running the shoot screen outside, getting up the football field. When you see him here again, getting up the football field, and he also should have had a touchdown pass that Barrett dropped in the end zone. So Magner been a big play guy for Bowling Green. Seven receptions on the afternoon already for 77 yards. Big third down and eight to try to keep this drive alive to start out the fourth quarter. And a penalty flag comes in, and we're going to get a false start procedure call against Bowling Green. Prior to the snap, false start offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's a tough way to start the quarter after a timeout. Finish up a little bit on uh, Cole Magner. Of course, mentioned he's from Alaska. His dad was his high school football coach. He brought down 34 players from Alaska to Greg Brandon's uh, camp. And watch the center. You see that jump? That little hitch right there is what they call it. 
Low snap over the middle. Pass is dropped. More hitting going on. Brandon Mitchell for the Buckeyes as the pass was intended for Magner. Doesn't drop a lot, but he took a pop. He did take a shot just trying to get Magner in the seam. And Brandon Mitchell, good job of timing that hit up and getting the ball out right before Magner can pull it in. And you can see right there, that's a big hit. Brandon Mitchell at freshman free safety. And that's a big play. And this defense, they, you know, they rely on big plays. And they've carried this team all season long, Craig. And today's no different because the offense has really struggled. Brandon Mitchell, only a freshman from Atlanta. And again, a penalty marker comes flying in. Prior to snap, ball start offense. Five-yard penalty. Falcons Six going the wrong down. way at this point. See if that gives Nate Fry any more room here to elude Chris Gamble, which he's been able to do hunting throughout this game. Chris Gamble, he, uh, he's getting anxious. He's getting anxious to do something offensively from a production standpoint, you know, whether it's special teams or... Well, he dropped the interception that would have been a touchdown, so I know he's kicking himself for that, and he just wants to get the ball in his hands. Got it this time. And sails out of bounds over at the 23-yard line. Gamble a threat offensively and defensively. Here's Jim Tressel. When they have the ball, it's defense. When we have the ball, he's more important on offense. So, I mean, I, I don't know any other way to put it. Our staffs <clears throat> would both like to have them all the time. I don't know that that's what our team needs. Uh, and it will really, a lot will depend upon the guys <clears throat> who uh, are, the, are the depth in both those positions. How are those receivers coming? How are those young corners coming? Well, they specifically said they wanted to keep Gamble away from the offense, at least for the first part of the season. Heat and the defense had been on the field a lot in the first three games as well. Well, if this offense doesn't pick up its execution and, and really come together pretty quickly, I think they'll probably put Gamble on that side of the ball a lot more and you know obviously he's got big playability and this offense kind of needs a jump start. Well, we had the questions whether or not he, he may play a little bit here today. The further you get into the season the more you have to wonder. So far he's only carried the ball one time rush for 15 yards he's not caught a pass yet. Ross. Trying to turn the corner, gets up near the 30-yard line. Brought down by Michael Malone. It's third down now for Ohio State in two. Just into the fourth quarter. And Malone is still down on the field for Bowling Green. And he has taken off his helmet. He is definitely in some pain. And he will be attended to by the training staff. And we will take a break while they attend to Michael Malone. Coming back to Ohio Stadium in a moment. Back in Columbus, Ohio State still leading Bowling Green 17-7. Michael Malone carried off by a couple of his teammates. And so he's being attended to over on the sideline for Bowling Green. He's had an impact here defensively in this game. Tim Arnold, his backup. First and 10, Ohio State from their own 31. And not a whole lot of running room for Drew Carter there. In hot pursuit, Daniel Sales. They tried to run the reverse like they did in the first half. They had a lot of su success when they ran in the first half of Bowling Green. In particular, Daniel Sales doing a good job of minding his own business, doing his job, and is right there to stop gambling. Like I said earlier, this defense, you've got to take your hat off to them, Craig. Those guys have played a tough ball game. They've been put in some tough situations, and they've hung in there. Charles Sharon. Let's this punt go, and it 
bounces out of bounds inside the 30 and marked about the 29 yard line so Bowling Green will get the ball back and they have had uh, some big victories against Purdue earlier this season their second fourth quarter comeback against a Big Ten opponent over the last three years so they have uh, been in this situation before so we take a look at what the Buckeyes are facing here over the next uh, four games Big Ten opener next Saturday against Northwestern and their first road trip to Wisconsin that's a Saturday night late 9 p.m. Eastern time game at Camp Randall Stadium. Wow. That'll be uh, quite an atmosphere. Back to pass. Harris. This one incomplete. He faced some pressure there. Looking for uh, Charles Sharon. And again, they've got Harris so programmed now not to pull the ball down and run. I think it kind of hurts him a little bit. That again is another incident where he probably could have ran the ball and made some positive yards. Quick snap and a pass over to Cole Magner. Short gain for the Falcons. And they've run this screen quite a bit today. They run it to the short side of the field and there's just not a lot of room out there. Magner just tries to get it up the field. He gets positive yards but Normally you're going to see that play run to the wide side of the field so that guy's going to have a lot of room to work. Harris has five receivers. He's in the shotgun. Over the middle pass complete and it is going to be close to a first down found Magner again. And it looks like the spot of the ball should give him the first down. And does. So a big third down play. Just running that slant out of the slot position again, and A.J. Hawk overruns it a little bit. We saw earlier in the game where Hawk just sat inside and made a big hit on Manger. This time he overruns it a bit, and Manger is able to get inside of him for a first down. Here come the Buckeyes. Pass complete. Magner's got it. And finally gets pulled down, but not after gaining nearly nine yards. Chris Gamble there. Buckeyes were coming on the blitz. Good blitz adjustment by Magner and Harris as well to read the blitz and get rid of the ball quickly out to Magner. You can see him right here, and he's looking inside. He sees the blitz, so he just blitz adjusts, turns around, and the ball's right on the money. Harris. Can't elude the rush that time. Will Smith in to bring him down. Will Smith, another Lombardi Award candidate, along with Tim Anderson and Darian Scott, but Scott out of this game with the left ankle injury in the first half. Third down and three. Crowd coming alive. The pass dropped. Would have been a first down. I don't know if this one is partially deflected, but James Hawkins had his hands on it, but couldn't haul it in. And again, another blitz adjustment, and Hawkins has to catch the ball. Ohio State is blitzing inside. Harris reads it, throws it out there, and, Harris, and Hawkins just kind of loses the football. You've got to make that catch, and like I've been saying all day, you've got to make plays when you have an opportunity to make them in a big ball game. That's where that old saying comes from, Craig. Big players make big plays in big games, and Bowling Green, just a couple plays that they didn't make has really hurt them. Against Big Ten teams. Against Big Ten. <laughs> Nate Fry comes in to punt. And sails this one out of bounds, but they'll mark it way up at the 24-yard line. They have done just about everything they can to avoid Campbell, and they have done that. So we're going to take a break. Ohio State will have the football when we come back. There's Archie Griffin on the sideline, former Ohio State Buckeye, associate athletic director. His club up 17-7. Ready to move into his new role, the Alumni Association. Scott McMullen still owning a 10-point lead. 
has been since late in the second quarter. Ohio State very successful on the ground so far in this one. And Ross adds a little more to it. Try 11 more. Another first down. Mitchell Crossley finally brings him down along with Jansen Patton. That's been their best running play, just this toss sweep outside. And watch the lineman out in front of him. Look at Mangold right there doing a great job. Rob Sims securing the corner. And then that allows Ross just to get outside and get a lot of positive yards. That's been the best run play for Ohio State all day. 96 yards on the ground for Liddell Ross. Bowen straight back. Time finds his receiver Michael Jenkins. What a running room if he gets some blockers inside the 20. TJ Carswell finally brings him down at the 16 yard line. And McMullen had all day to throw that football, allowed Jenkins to, to pop open on that dig route. Number 19, Jason Morton, was on the coverage and fell down. You can see, watch how much time McMullen has to throw this ball. He's just waiting for Jenkins to come open. And you can see 19, Jason Morton fell down, and G Jenkins is wide open on that dig route. 46-yard gain as Jenkins goes to the sideline. They have got his bell rung a little bit. Straight up the gut again. Maurice Hall inside the 10. The passing works, the run works. It's time now for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency. 98% of Red Roof Inn guests plan to come back, so see you soon. Look at the Red Zone proficiency today. One for one for the Buckeyes, no field goals. Got the touchdown. Second and three, Hall down to the five. Looks like he picked up another first down. Ted Pipgow there to stop him. Ohio State would like to deliver a dagger of sorts. Already up 10. And right now they're just playing power smash mouth football and they're just dominating the line of scrimmage. Maurice Hall running with power, just runs over Pipco, gets it two or three more yards, and right now this is where that size and strength and power is really starting to, to play a factor in this ball game. First and goal at the five. Schnicker and Hall in the backfield. Hall gets the call, and he is stacked up for maybe a gain of one down to the four. Not a hole there to run through. They just run this inside play with Schnitger leading again and Bowling Green. They do a good job of closing down the hole and they played hard today. But right now, this big, big offensive line is really starting to control the line of scrimmage. Ross near 100 yards. Hall goes over 100. 19 rushes, 106 yards on the afternoon. Ross back in there behind Schnitger. He gets the pitch. Should get into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. First score of the second half for the Buckeyes. Extend their lead. And with 8.46 to go in the ball game, that lead is looking pretty good right now. However, don't forget, they were up big last Saturday. They go back to this toss play again. They're the best running play they've had all day. And now it's just a foot race, and Ross is able to outrun the defense to the corner. And the extra point is good. That makes our score Ohio State 24, Bowling Green 7. Ohio Stadium lights up again. Ohio State extending its lead at 24-7, putting a good-looking drive together on that last drive. The big play, the 46-yard pass play to Michael Jenkins. 
who takes it inside the 20 yard line then Ross gets a couple of calls so does Hall they're both over 100 yards now in the afternoon and Ross scoots into the end zone to make it a 24 7 ball game 8 46 to go in this contest and a long kickoff dropped in the end zone and a touchback Brandon Jones couldn't get a handle on it. So it'll be a touchback at the 20. The BMW ultimate drive. Six plays, 76 yards and 234. Capped off by the three-yard touchdown run for Ross. The running game is back for Ohio State. Two backs over 100 yards. Doesn't necessarily solve the problem altogether, but it's a pretty nice start when you go back to basics. No question, and they know that with this big offensive line, very experienced and aggressive, that they can now play smash mouth football and get their running game back to where it should be. Harris looking straight downfield at his receiver, but again, Ohio State's defense is there looking for James Hawkins and Dustin Fox there to knock it away. Fox made a great play on this. He's actually in, in the flat, the short flat. He plays the football and then knocks the ball out right there. Great job by Dustin Fox, and that shows his speed. He's a track guy also, very fast, under 4-4. He uses all that speed to get back and knock that ball away. Second and 10. And the inside handoff this time for Bowling Green. Gets some yards. P.J. Pope there on the carry. And Bowling Green really needs to get up to the line of scrimmage and run their plays a lot quicker. They never huddle, but at the same time, there's no huddle. They're not using it to dictate the tempo to Ohio State right now. They're down by a lot of points. About eight minutes left in the game. They should be running it like a two-minute offense. Bobby Carpenter, the sophomore to Lancaster. B.J. Lane, the last ball carrier for Bowling Green. Harris on third and eight, looks downfield, pass complete, stretch for the first down, and it looks like Steve Sanders got it. Great athletic move on his part. And to shake a tackler and come up with an extra two-yard stretch. Great effort by Sanders to stretch that out and get the first down, but this offense, they've got to get some big plays quickly. They're down by a lot. And you knew their numbers would be uh, hard-pressed to match 575 coming in against Ohio State. Only 219 today, though. Those numbers just haven't gotten the job done when you throw in the turnover factor. Magnum, the catch. Good for about seven yards. Nate Sally there on defense for Ohio State. Number one offense at 575 a game coming in. Number one offense in the country. And you can see they're just milling around right now. Everybody's kind of walking around. They need to be at the line of scrimmage ready to snap the ball as soon as they get the play in. Um, they're not pressing the issue at all. And the rankings have improved on total offense over the last four years. Pretty good to be in that 200 range to one in a matter of four years. And again, the running game, B.J. Lane, Look at 110 in 2000. But look at the steps they made. They were pretty equal all the way up. And those jumps really, they've been able to recruit better players because they've had some success. And it all starts with the quarterback, of course, Josh Harris. And his understanding of this offense has really taken them to another level. And Greg Brandon, the first year coach, has been the offensive coordinator the previous two years before taking over. So this offense really hasn't changed a whole lot. B.J. Lane again, and maybe he fumbled. Bowling Green says they got it back. And they did. So the Falcons fortunate enough to recover this one. And this is the first option play we've seen all day. And you see that ball pops out right there, but he's already on the ground. And the ground can cause a fumble. But we thought that they were going to run a lot more option. As we take a look again, that ball actually looks like it comes out before he, he hits the ground, Craig. But in college football, there's no instant replay, so Bowling Green keeps possession. But we thought they'd run a lot more option 
especially to slow down this Ohio State defense, and that's the first time we've seen it all day. Magner comes out of there dipping a little bit. Stays in the game. Will Smith stripped for that fumble, but B.J. Lane got it back to set up second and four. Again, they stick with the running game. And this time it's P.J. Pope. A little surprise they're doing this. This is what they should have been doing early in, the, in this half when they didn't get things going. Now they need to score points and score them quickly, and they're trying to run the football. There's only five minutes left in the game, and they're running the inside trap. And what this does, it keeps the clock running, and that's not in Bowling Green's favor. First down and 10 inside Ohio State territory. Here comes the blitz, gets the pass away. On the screen, a little bit of running room up there for Pope. DeAndre brings him down. Good gain of about eight yards, but again, that clock continues to roll, approaching five minutes. It does, and again, these are plays that they all should have run early. This is a screen pass, the first screen we've actually seen all ball game. It looks like it's a successful play. They get eight yards, but they can't do that. They need chunks of yards right now because the clock is not in their favor. Second and two. Harris over the middle, pass complete, first down. And he finds Steve Sanders. And Ohio State doesn't mind giving up those yards right now or those first downs because it plays in into their favor. They can drive the football down the field. And you can see this is just a short gain. It's enough for a first down. But Ohio State, Ohio State's credit, you know, they, they make the tackle and the clock keeps running. On the shotgun, Harris rolls right, pass complete. Sanders, and a nice gainer up to the 15-yard line, another first down. That's moving the ball forward, and of course, in college, the luxury of having that clock stop on the first downs. They just run the stop outside and gets up the field. He does the best he can, Steve Sanders does, to get as many yards as he can. But again, Ohio State will allow them to do this. Make them put together an eight, nine, 10 yard, 10 play drive to score because that means they've had to run a lot of time off the clock. First down and 10 from the Ohio State 15. Harris in the shotgun. Looking over the middle as his receiver. And that is Sanders. Picks up another first down, sets up first and goal. However, there's a flag down in the backfield of Bowling Green, so they're going to bring this one back. Ooh, that's a biggie. That is a biggie. That's a holding call that's going to bring this play all the way back. Only 3.50 to go in this game. Holding. Offense. Ten yards, previous spot. Repeat first down. And watch the top of the screen. You can see right there, he just gets his arm outside. And they're going to call that every time. Jimmy Williams, left tackle number 54. You get those speed rushers out there, especially when they know that you're going to be throwing the ball. Those guys are coming up field with speed, and Jimmy Williams just got caught with that arm a little too far out extended. Puts the ball all the way back to the 25 when it could have been first to go from the three. And this one, incomplete. Looking for Charles Sharon. You know, I said earlier that Ohio State doesn't mind giving up this drive. When Bowling Green got the football, there was about eight minutes left in the ball game. You can see now there's only three minutes, 31 seconds left, and they're still only on the, on the Ohio State 25-yard line. So that's a win for this defense because they made them have to drive and take a lot of time off the clock. Now to score three times to get back in this one. Second and 20, over the middle, finds his receiver, touchdown to Cole Magner. Took a mighty hit, stayed on his feet, and went into the end zone. Well, that's the quick score you need from that point. Bowling Green was able to come up with it. Magner's been their big play guy. He just runs the seam route. Instead of running that slant, he just takes it straight up the field makes the big catch and Brandon Mitchell instead of wrapping him up tries to knock him down with the body blow and uh, Magner shakes him off. 
Swisham's extra point is good. So they ran downfield, did a little bit of passing, and then the big play. Harris finds his favorite receiver, Cole Magner. And we have a 24-14 game. Back at Ohio Stadium, Bowling Green now back within 10. As Josh Harris found Magner on the touchdown strike over the middle. 24-14 the score. And now the question is, does Bowling Green do the onside? It looks like they're lining up in some type of formation similar to that. We'll see what happens. Well, you have to here, Craig. You're down by two scores with three minutes and 25 seconds left. You've got to get the ball. And the ball falls off the tee. It's been placed on there. In a position to kick an onside kick. Looks like it's just kind of resting against it on the ground. <laughs> Swisham will handle the duties. He's got Cole Magner behind him. He's special teams, good hands man. Ball bounces up. It's up for grabs and out of bounds. Does Bowling Green have it? They do. A tremendous play by number two, Jansen Patton. Grabbed the ball, maintained possession with his feet in bounds before sailing out. And what a great kick. This is exactly how you design it. You want that big high hop and Patton right on the spot and keeps his feet in it. Look at this kick. That's exactly the way they design it. You want that big hop. Bounces over the Ohio State player and Patton's right there to make the recovery. First and 10 at the Ohio State 44. Here we go again. Bowling Green not done yet. Pass over the middle, complete. Inside the 30-yard line. Again to Magner. And now they've got to get to the line of scrimmage to be ready to snap the ball when the ref winds the clock. Red Ohio Stadium. Bowling Green giving number four Ohio State. All it can handle late in the game. They're within 10, but they have the football. Josh Harris. Eludes the sack, completes the pass, and knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line for P.J. Pope. 3-0-1 left on the clock. And that's all just Josh Harris making a play. You can see it looks like they've got him wrapped up, but he uses those strong legs, and then he keeps his eyes downfield, finds Pope outside just standing on the sidelines, and they've got another first down and moving the football again. 104,000 plus here at Ohio Stadium. Doesn't look like anyone's left. They've seen this before. Harris over the middle. This one right through the hands of his intended receiver, Steve Sanders. Just over that right shoulder. He wanted it over his left. Just had to get his eyes around a little quicker. He's trying to get off that bump and run coverage out there. There's Josh Harris, his wife, Tammy Harris, former Ohio State Buckeye track and field star, dressed in a bowling green jersey with Hubby's number five. Over the middle, pass complete. Again to Steve Sanders, hangs onto it down to the five, about a yard shy of first down. Clock continues to roll. They're running those slants inside. You can see that pick route again, and Sanders is trying to get that first down mark, get to the first down mark and stop the clock. But he's just short, and the clock is still running. They've got to get up to the line and get a play ran. Third down and one, down by 10. Balls at the five. And the flag comes in again. All right, snap. Ball start offense. Penalty. That has been a problem in the second half. And I think they're going to get Murkowski again. Watch the center. You can see that jump. And then also they got Andy Grubb, the right guard. Watch the right guard. He's going to flinch and move. And when you're in third and one, you're in your two-minute offense, you can't afford, can't afford to have those penalties.
Third down and six. Harris throws it away. Or will they rule him a sack? Flag comes in. They'll sort it out. A.J. Hawk and Quinn Pitcock applying the pressure. That's going to be real tough there. The illegal grounding is going to move them way back. Josh Harris out of desperation trying to get rid of that ball. Tension grounding. Charge to the offense. That is lost it down. Spot foul. Fourth down. So with 1.51 to go, comes down to a final play here to try to keep this game alive for Bowling Green. And they will come out and kick the field goal. Only down 10. They need some kind of score. Which is smart. Exactly. You come out, you get the three points. And then you try to onside kick again and see if you can get into the end zone. Smart play right here. Sean Swisham in. And this one will be about a 33-yard attempt. Right down the middle. And Bowling Green comes out of there with points after receiving the onside kick. So now only down by seven with 146 to go, and they'll try it one more time. One more time. Stranger things have happened, and if they can get that onside kick the way they got it the last time, it would be great. And Swisham is a solid veteran kicker. Special teams good on both sides for these clubs. And Greg Brandon said, yep, that's what we needed. When we talked to him, he said they just wanted to hang around. They wanted to look up in the fourth quarter and see that they were still in the game and had a shot, and that's exactly where they are. They're still in the game. They still have a shot. They've got to recover this onside kick, though. Two weeks ago against Purdue, they were down in the fourth quarter, came back to win 27-26. Three years ago at Northwestern, did the same thing. They have done this to the Big Ten before. They have defeated six BCS teams since the turn of the new century here. Once again, Swisham sets up the ball, resting on the ground and then leaning against his tee. It worked once. Will it work twice? It's playing out the same way, Craig. The well, ball falls say, off the yeah. tee again. <laughs> just like the first time. Could be deja vu. About the time put into practicing that. You're setting practicing. up the ball to, to fall off the edge <laughs> and then coming back to redo it. That's what kickers do when everyone else practices. They've got nothing else to right. do. <laughs> This one bounces and right into an Ohio State player out there on special teams. And that's the big tight end, Ben Hartsock. Put your good hands people out there. They call it the good hands team. And you can see the difference between the first onside kick when they got the big bounce versus this one when they don't get the big bounce. It's an easy recovery for the hands team. And Ben Hartsock, you can see it bounces right to him. All he's got to do is cradle it and fall down. 146 to go. Bowling Green still has two timeouts available. Let's see how the Ohio State Buckeyes attack the final 146 of this contest up by seven. How much you want to bet they run the football here, Greg? They've had tremendous success. <laughs> and it keeps the clock running. Loss in the backfield. Schnitger is fullback. Gets about three up to the 40, and Bowling Green right away calls timeout. Mike Fowler there on the stop. Let's take a look at the outstanding back of the game brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Liddell Rush, 20 rushes, 101 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And this was a biggie on fourth down and two. That was in the first half. It goes for a touchdown. 
And that set the tone for the for the second half. That was right before halftime. And and Ross and Hall have come out and run the ball very well behind this big offensive line. Both go over 100 yards today. And Ross coming into the game only had 60 yards on the season. So I know they're all going to feel better about their running game. Well, it says a lot. You know, Hall comes into this one averaging 3.2 yards a carry, and Ross only 2.6 yards a carry. They've made tremendous strides, and again, it all starts up front. They've had some room to run. And that's, you know, they put the burden on that offensive line. They didn't play well last week, and so those guys were challenged, and they responded very well. Trapped in Bowling Green timeout. Pitch back to Ross. And a whole lot of room there, and right away, Bowling Green calls timeout. National champion Ohio State football on ESPN Plus has been presented today by Marathon. So the Falcons burn their final timeout. It's going to be third down and 10 with 1.34 to go. Ohio State needs to come up with... Uh, some big run or dare they pass to try to pick this up i don't think you pass you, you definitely have to run the ball bowling green is out of timeouts so the clock is going to run if you, if you try to throw the ball and it's incomplete the clock stops and that plays into bowling green's favor so i really don't think it's likely that ohio state is going to even attempt to throw the ball for this first down they'll definitely keep it on the ground Ohio State, a 17-game winning streak. On the line this afternoon. You see the close calls during that streak. Nine wins to sounded by seven points or less. Could today be 10. Ross and Schnicker in the backfield. Ross doubles the pitch, ball loose. And Bowling Green says they've got it. Looks like the Buckeyes may have recovered. Yep, fourth down. Referee signaling fourth down. So the Buckeyes get it back, but it is fourth down. And we're still waiting for the official signal. And it looks like we have an official holding up his foot, the hand for fourth down, although Bowling Green says, hey, it should be our football. It's going to be Ohio State football. Now they're going to be in the punting situation. And did they dodge a bullet there? They just run this toss play, the play they've run all day long, and Lydell Ross just takes his eyes off the ball, and look how close it is to Jason Morton recovering that football. It comes right back to Ross, and you can see his head is down the field. You've got to make sure you have the ball first. It's bouncing around. You can see it comes right back to Ross, but Morton was almost on that football. Boy, how did Ross come out of there with the football? determination he says I am not giving this one up a little determination a little luck <laughs> nevertheless Ohio State keeps the ball Charles Sharon set deep and whistles stop play in the field play a game called on Ohio State as the clock ticks down to 49 A little bonus for Bowling Green. Three extra seconds on the clock. Every second counts when you're out of timeouts. Trailing by seven. And they'll definitely be coming to try to block this punt. Blocked seven punts a year ago. Not this time. This one's short, however. Sharon at the 20. Looking into the sun. Still on his feet. Brought down about the 24 yard line so that's where bowling green goes from there 42 seconds for josh harris and company here's ohio state's rushing numbers on the uh, day 205 yards the season coming in only getting 102 and they needed to get that running game on track especially with Crimson out at quarterback when Mullen really struggled throwing the ball down the field, so the running game had to step up for him. 
It's Josh Harris now versus that Ohio State defense. He has to go 76 yards. Over the middle, falls incomplete. Looking for Magner. Just off by maybe a step there. And there's a lot of room between the linebackers and the secondary. Ohio State's defensive backs are playing about 25 yards deep. So there's going to be a lot of room behind those linebackers to catch some balls. And in college football, the clock stops on a first down. So that's what they should be shooting for. 38 seconds to go. Harris back, chased out of there. Loops him up near the sideline. This one falls out of bounds. He was looking for P.J. Pope. So it's third down, 31 seconds to go. Harris avoiding the rush, just trying to find something downfield, just throws it up for Pope on the sideline. Simon Nate. Frazier doing his job up front, chasing him out of there. And Nate Sally doing a good job playing that center field role, just going to the ball. Ohio State with three linemen rushing. Harris looking over the middle, pass complete, first down. Inside Buckeye territory, Magner with the catch, and they'll mark it about the 47-yard line. First down, 23 seconds to go. And that's where they're, they can find a lot of room in front of those deep secondary guys and behind the linebackers. And Harris spikes this one to stop the clock with 22 seconds to go. And Ohio State stays in that same defense where they have three defensive backs about 25 yards downfield. Once again, this Ohio State defense forced to backpedal in a contest trying to preserve a victory. And the Buckeye defense calls timeout. Not a bad call there. Not a bad call. If you're going to play your defensive backs that deep, you've got to get those linebackers wide outside to disrupt those wide receivers. Second down and 10 right now, 22 seconds to go, and Ohio State calling the timeout. Defensively to regroup. We're inside Ohio Stadium, Bowling Green on the move, trailing by seven against number four, Ohio State. J.C. Pearson, Ann Marie Anderson, I'm Craig Kishan. It's been entertaining. Another fourth quarter comeback for an Ohio State opponent. They were up 24 to seven, but Bowling Green was able to come back just under the four minute mark, score a touchdown, get an onside kick, get a field goal. And on downs got the football back. And they changed their defense. Now they're gonna try to play a little closer to those wide receivers outside. Harris going for it all. Incomplete into the end zone. Gamble there on defense of Jansen Patton. And Jansen Patton, the cornerback that they put in the ball game as a wide receiver, and they go after Ohio State's best defensive back, Chris Gamble. Another big day for Josh Harris, 33 of 53, 326 yards. You can see they're just trying to run the go route outside. They bring Patton in, one of their fastest players, and Chris Gamble does a good job of playing the football. Interesting they bring a player in from defense to help out against perhaps the nation's best cornerback. Harris chased out of there. Makes a throw intercepted. Will Allen's got the football. And he is brought down with one second to go, and Ohio State hangs on again. Once again, it comes down to the Buckeye defense, and Will Allen and company are there. Harris was forced to make one last play, and it looks like 
time has expired off the clock, and that is the ball game. And this Buckeye defense again comes up with a key play to preserve a win. And Will Allen, this is the second time he's done that this season. Actually, the third time. San Diego State, last week he makes the big tackle against North Carolina State, and then today comes up with another big interception. He is a big-time playmaker for this Buckeye defense and comes through in the clutch one more time. And one more time, Ohio State wins this game 24-17. So the streak is alive. Here's one more look. And Simon Frazier forces Harris to step up in the pocket. And you can see Will Allen does a good job playing his eyes and playing the ball and being what he is, the big playmaker on this defense. Comes up with the interception and runs the clock out. Ohio State has another close win. So the streak now reaches 18 games, and Craig Krenzel not able to play in this game, but his good friend, another senior quarterback, Scott McMullen, was be able to lead this Ohio State Buckeye team. They got some tremendous efforts from their running backs, Maurice Hall and Liddell Ross. And there is McMullen. Let's go down to the sideline and Anne Marie Anderson. Coach, another week with a fourth quarter square, scare. How do you feel about your team's performance today? Well, you can't turn the ball over that like that and be a good team. And our defense has really been put out there on that field way too much. Bowling Green has a fine football team. They never stop playing. But we've got a lot of work to do to become a good team. How big a factor do you think your defense was controlling the pace of this game and this victory for you? Oh, our defense has been huge in every one of our victories, and they just keep playing hard. And and uh, you know we just got We got to go to work. We got the conference starting next week. As we talked about at the half, coach, your running game has been a concern for you. Are you satisfied that you've got it back on track? Well, you know I think we got a little better, but we're not back on track yet. Thanks, coach. Back to you guys. All right, Anne Marie, thanks very much. Scott McMullen and the Buckeyes survive again 24 17, the final score. We're going to come back with a final word from Ohio Stadium in a moment. Jim Tressel, the Ohio State Buckeyes, paying tribute with the Ohio State Marching Band and their fans here. Another victory for the Buckeyes in close fashion, but they come out the victors. 24 to 17 is the final score and uh, up 24 to 7 with a little over three minutes to go. All of a sudden, Bowling Green comes back. There was enough time to make a, a march. Things bounced their way. Well, I don't think Ohio State uh, feels comfortable unless it's a close game and, and it goes down to the wire. They love these close games. They play much better when the game is close, and that's what happened today. Let's go down to Ann Marie one more time, Ann. Maurice, we talked earlier this week about your frustration last week with the running game. Do you feel now that you've gotten it back on track? I think so. I think we made a step towards, you know, progression, and we definitely were better than last year, last week, and, and that was our goal. You've had uh, fourth quarter square scares for the last few weeks. What are you guys going to do to start playing ball the way that I imagine you want to? We just got to continue to just continue to work hard and uh, the whole game and make sure we stay focused all 60 minutes because we know everybody's going to play hard the whole game, so we got to make sure we're focused. Great. Thanks, Mo. Let's go back to you guys. All right, thanks very much again. You know, Coach Brandon told us yesterday this Ohio State game, win or lose, is not their season. they got to focus in on the MAC now. That's exactly what they've got to do. They played well, but now it's time to get into conference play for both of these teams, and now it really counts. Well, it sure has been entertaining throughout the afternoon here. We had some turnovers early. Teams were able to capitalize. But in the end, another 24-7 lead was nearly blown by the Buckeyes, but they come out the victor and that's all that matters at this point for the Ohio State that's for sure 24 17 so the nation's longest winning streak is extended by the Buckeyes it is now 18 games as they again top Bowling Green 24 17 the final there Bowling Green will have next week off and Ohio State opens up Big Ten play so the Buckeyes improved to 4-0 on the season. Bowling Green falls to 3-1. Buckeyes stay home next week. 
They get the victory here this afternoon, 24-17 over Bowling Green. For J.C. Pearson and Murray Anderson and our entire crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.